Tumup sends his own teammate head first into the crate. This is unbelievable. Silver Bullet just pushed Tumup off the track sideways. Unbelievable. Silhouette just did the same thing. And that's it. Lamelt has done it. Against all odds, somehow Lamelt came back. The Silver Slivers are back, and they're looking for revenge. But first, they're gonna have to fight their way through all these vehicles in the Junkyard Joust main event. Hi everybody, I'm Aaron Yonda, and I've got an epic showdown for you this evening. 50 cars are gonna be competing, 10 teams, and here are five of them, and here's the other five. They've all earned their position here, but only three of these teams get to advance to the finals. Let's take a look at our teams. The Silver Slivers are still smarting after that surprise upset in Season 1 of Junkyard Joust. The top three teams from last season are competing this season, and they're each allowed one substitution, and the Slivers have chosen Riley and Scott Mark III to replace the Chancellor. Also returning will be Silhouette 2, Silver Bullet, Tomb Up, and Stinger. The Crimson Crashers blew through the competition in the qualifiers, but do they have what it takes to go all the way to the finals again? Their team consists of the Ferrari F40, the Solaire, the Ferrari Testarossa, the Classic Cobra, and the Porsche 962. The industrial accidents caused a lot of accidents in the qualifiers, mainly because of the ramp on the back of helicopter transport, and the unusual ability of Tractor Digger to actually lift that ramp when necessary. Also featuring Street Cleaner, the Recycler, and another big rig, the NASA Anteater. Jet Streak is a team of fast, low-to-the-ground cars with some decent undercutting ability that totally dominated in their qualifier. Featuring Jet Threat 4, Formula E Gen 2, Snow Patrol, FL Racer, and Jet Threat 3. The Barnstormers, an assortment of farm machinery actually owned by the farmer who owns the land where Junkyard Joust is shot. Featuring the Isuzu Giga, which of course has a full load of cows in the back. But don't worry, they're stunt cows. Also featuring a tractor with manure spreader, the Deli Dairy Truck, Snow Plow, and a Dodge Ram with a wagon full of hay. But don't worry, it's stunt hay. Next up is Cookie's Crime Syndicate, run by the notorious Baby Cookie. This team delights in causing havoc on the track. I don't even know if they really care about anything other than causing chaos. Featuring the Ooze Coop, with that deadly low back. Purple Passion, which isn't purple. Baby Cookie's Personal Transport, the Diaper Dragger, Tail Dragger, and Fast Cash. The Lonely Hearts Club Vans. This Beatles-based team survived the qualifiers mostly because of A Hard Day's Night. Also featuring Sergeant Pepper, Rubber Soul, Magical Mystery Tour, and White Album. Next up is the Guardians of the Junkyard, a team of super beings that only lost two vehicles in the qualifying match. Featuring Star-Lord, Doc Ock, Captain America, Thanos, and Groot. The Hot Racers made it through the qualifiers with a variety of different cars and different skills. With Hologram, the Morris Mini, the 10 Ford Mustang, Driftsta, and the Corvette C7R. The Void Runners found success in the qualifiers with their mix of different cars. Featuring Shadow, X-Steam, Alien, the Porsche Carrera, and slicked back. The rules for Junkyard Joust are simple, survive. Each team takes turns sending a car down the track. The teams get to choose which car they send down and that's where the strategy comes in. If you're sideways or upside down at the end of the round, you're out. Each team gets points for each car that they have left at the end of a round. The choice of where to start in the running order was given to each team based on its performance in the qualifiers. Starting with the Silver Slivers who were given first choice because of their performance in season one of Junkyard Joust. Each team gets to choose which car they send down each turn. There's a lot of strategy in choosing your spot in the running order. Let's see how it all plays out in round one of Junkyard Joust. Jet Streak has elected to send down Jet Threat 4. They're going to send him down into the Evil Weevil, who is our track buffer. Perhaps they wanted to get Jet Threat 4 out of the way before this guy goes down the track. Helicopter Transport's ready to set up that ramp. It's 
could be a big deciding factor in how this event plays out. Industrial accidents know that, and that's why they sent them down first. But we've also seen that it's possible to survive the ramp on that thing, and Hologram is gonna be the first one to give it a shot. Hologram hits it and survives with flying colors, literally. Look at that thing go. It goes all the way up to the crates in sort of a dive. Flips back upright, perfect recovery. Nice job on that one. Nice low center of gravity helped it. Next up for the plunge is the Ferrari Testarossa for the Crimson Crashers. The Ferrari does not show the same style and grace as the Hot Racers on this one. Hits the back of Evil Weevil, flips around, looks like it's gonna be okay, and then flips right upside down. That's gonna be a tough loss for the Crimson Crashers, assuming it stays in that position, which it's likely to do. Next up is Shadow for the Void Runners. Shadow hits the ramp and just flops uselessly at the front of the track, upside down, completely annihilated. Tough loss for the Void Runners there, and of course, Cookie's Crime Syndicate. Cookie wants to go down first herself. I don't think she's belted into the car as usual, but she likes the thrill, and what a thrill she gets! Cookie flies up into the air! Ejects from the car. The car flips over and does not make a recovery, but Cookie bounces and bounces again. I think she's okay. She's used to these kind of stunts. Look at that. Cookie's head hits the bottom of that Ferrari and she bounces and lands it. That's a tough baby. Tractor with manure spreaders up next for the Barnstormers. I think they're hoping the length of this vehicle will be able to do something to the helicopter transport. And it is not. It gets up on the back as if it's going to be transported and then flops off to the side, done. A good effort there by the Barnstormers, but it did not pay off. And now Groot's up for Guardians of the Junkyard. Interesting story, Groot's buddy Rocket was scheduled to perform in the qualifier, but he never showed up. Luckily, it looks like he's arrived just in time to be a part of this big match. Here they go, down the track, and <laughs> unfortunately, Groot takes a flying leap, Rocket falls off, Groot smashes into him and lands on his face. And uh, unfortunately, being upside down, sideways, or on your face counts as elimination here in Junkyard Joust. So that is, uh, that's gonna be an elimination unless someone hits him and knocks him right back up again. Now up for the Lonely Hearts Club vans, it's Sergeant Pepper. Sergeant Pepper collides with the back of that transport, but is not able to do anything to him. And Sergeant Pepper perches there in a precarious position. The Silver Slivers have decided it's time to test out Riley and Scott Mark III. Now look at the low front on that vehicle. If anything can get under the ramp, this can. And it almost does! Riley and Scott hit that ramp, don't go off of it, but can't move the ramp up and just stop dead. Will the Formula E Gen 2 be able to capitalize on this and get that ramp up? No, he just borks to Riley and Scott 3 right off the track, but Riley and Scott 3 makes a nice recovery. It was close, but they managed to recover, and now the Formula E Gen 2 is in a bad position. Let's see if the Recycler can turn him into scrap. The Recycler does not manage to do that. In fact, the Recycler flips over upside down and just fails miserably in the Formula E Gen 2, hiding back by the crates in a great position. Totally recovered. I asked Junkyard Joust patrons to pick who they thought was gonna win this event, and overwhelmingly, they chose the Silver Slivers, 33.3%. Although Industrial Accidents came in close behind at 29.2, and then Crimson Crashers at 20. I can't wait to see who got the closest. The 10 Ford Mustang is up now for the Hot Racers. Ooh, the Mustang puts the kibosh, or should I say the carbosh, on that recycler. He's upside down off the track, and the Mustang perches on the flatbed of that truck. Let's see if that works out for him. Next up for the Crimson Crashers is Ferrari F40. The Ferrari takes flight off that jump, and in the process actually knocks out two competitors. Sergeant Pepper goes upside down with all the movement, and the Ford Mustang is just disasterized. The Porsche Carrera is up next for the Void Runners. The heavy car, and it doesn't matter. The car just smashes into the crates and goes straight upside down. He had a nice arc, but then the crates just kind of ended his trajectory, and that is going to do it for that vehicle. Another tough loss for the Void Runners. Fast cash now for Cookie's Crime Syndicate. 
Fast Cat gently hops up onto the back of the transport, and that's not a bad position to be in. That was a great jump, actually. The Barnstormers are going to try to plow that ramp off the track with the snowplow. Snowplow! Oh, the closest thing we've seen to actually getting that ramp off the track. Snowplow hits it, knocks it up, but then it flops back down, and Snowplow goes flying through the air. In fact, the Snowplow almost makes it to level 7 on the height bar. That's kind of insane, considering what a big vehicle that is. And unfortunately, that ramp is right back down on the track. Guardians of the Galaxy are going to try to hit that ramp with 106 grams of Thanos, see if they can make it go up. And it does not work at all. Thanos makes a beautiful jump off the back, hits the crates, and uh, he does not have a lot of agility, just goes pretty much straight upside down. But look at that height. He made it all the way up to seven, surpassing the snowplow. Unfortunately, there is no reward for that. It's just fun. Next up, the Magical Mystery Tour is wanting to take us away. And the Magical Mystery Tour, unfortunately, is going to be taken away from us. Upside down, jumps off the back and makes a terrible recovery. Just rolls all over the place like a walrus in a bathtub. Next up is Stinger for Silver Slivers. Ooh, Stinger is well known for that low front of his vehicle and he almost manages to get that transport off the track and get rid of that jump. Look at the front of his car. It's like it's made to disable that ramp, but he's not quite able to do it. Still, this could prevent that ramp from being effective. Let's see what Snow Patrol does. Snow Patrol, in an amazing feat of athleticism, flips upside down. You'll never see something like that except in the Olympics and just lands it perfectly on that jump. Now they're piling up. This could be the end of that threat. In fact, I think Industrial Accident sees that Stinger's a threat here and they're sending down the Digger. Digger gets underneath the back and that could be bad. It's tough to say for sure. Let's see what happens when the Mini hits the track. The Mini plows into the back of Tractor Digger, gets underneath but can't stay there, and the cars are starting to back up on the track. It's safe to say that ramp might be out of commission right now. Classic Cobra up for Crimson Crashers. The Cobra smacks into the back of the Mini and almost gets that Digger to go up, but he is just stuck on the back of Stinger. Classic Cobra, of course, one of the elite few that survived the qualifiers without being eliminated. Here are all the vehicles participating today that have a perfect record. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that Thanos is already off this list. Who will be next to be eliminated for the first time? Now up is Slicked Back for the Void Runners. Slicked Back slots into place on the track with that low back. The Void Runners hoping to repeat the success of the helicopter transport, but Cookie's Crime Syndicate might have something to say about that. They want the same exact thing for their ooze coop. And this thing has a low front. Let's see what happens. Ooze coop throws slick back off the field. The front of his car was the perfect height to just knock him out and then immediately take his place, almost like a doppelganger or something. And now ooze coop is poised to repeat the success of helicopter transport if he can stay right there on the track. Sounds like those cows are ready for their big moment. Barnstormers are sending down a Suzu Giga. And the cows flew everywhere. They did not make as much height as they did in their initial run in the qualifier, but uh, there's still a lot of uh, cows all over the place now. That It looks like that black one almost managed to stand up again, and the truck itself is unfortunately uh, done, it looks like. Barnstormer's having a pretty rough time of it so far in this match. Captain America's up now for Guardians. Ooh, Cap bounces off of Digger and goes sideways, and that might be it for him. Now, Cap was one of those cars that has not been eliminated yet. His perfect record might be in danger, but of course everyone's is here tonight. White Album is up now for the Vans. White Album goes right off the back of Ooze and bounces off of the Cobra and goes straight upside down. And now Cobra is in danger, but we've seen him recover from this before, so we'll see what happens when the next car goes. And that car is going to be Tomb Up for Silver Slippers. 
Toom Up leaps off the back of Ooze, makes a really nice jump and a solid landing. Oh, and right at the end there, Cobra slides off the track and is currently upside down. Oh, and it looks like Toom Up has run over one of the cows, or maybe one of the cows was actually trying to play a spoiler on Toom Up and get him sideways, but uh, didn't quite work. Close though. Jet Threat 3 is up now for Jet Streak. Jet Threat 3 does a wild flip and somehow manages to land it after going off the back of Ooze Coop. He clips the back of Digger and somehow manages to land on top of Fast Cash over there in a safe spot. NASA Anteater's up now for the industrial accidents. This is Big Truck. And the Anteater just rumbles right over Ooze Coop and it unfortunately ends his own teammate. And one of the only vehicles that we know can get underneath the back of that ramp. Tough loss there for industrial accidents. Up now for the hot racers, it's Drifsta. And there he goes up into the sky, actually reaches, it looks like I think a height of five and does what should have been a great landing, but clips off the cab of transport and goes upside down. The end of the track down by the crates has not been a great landing place for vehicles this particular match. Now it's the Solaire for Crimson Crashers. Here comes the Assassin. And true to his name, he assassinates that Mini. Turns him over sideways, but does start to go up on the back of Ooze Coop. That could be dangerous. Aliens up now for Void Runners. And a big punch there, but can't get Solaire off the track. And doesn't really get much action, unfortunately. And now Alien could be in a tough spot. Guess we'll see if Purple Passion can heist Alien off the track for the Crime Syndicate. Purple Passion pushes Alien up and off the track, but not upside down. Unfortunately, then goes sideways off the back of Stinger and Ooze Coop and may have just ended herself right there. Dodge Ram with the hay wagons up now. This is gonna be interesting because there is a lot going on here. The Dodge Ram rams into everything and hay bales are flying and the ram itself has tipped over, drove over everything on the track, but the wagon's still there or, okay, the wagon is still there. The wagon is upright, but unfortunately the ram itself is not. So if it stays in that position, it's out. Doc Ock is gonna plow into the back of this wagon. Doc Ock sends hay bales into the stratosphere. Look at how high these things go. Oh yeah, that's going all the way up to over 11. Might even be a 12 if we had a 12 on that thing. That's some serious height. Look at the devastation. And unfortunately for Doc Ock, Doc Ock is now upside down after smashing into that wagon. There's hay everywhere. There's cows everywhere. And unfortunately, another big hit for the Guardians as they probably lost Doc Ock. Rubber Soul's up now for the Vans. Rubber Soul goes right off the back of Ooze Coop, bounces around a little bit, and lands on his partner upside down. And now up is Silhouette 2 for the Sliver. Silhouette 2 is a survivor. And that's exactly what Silhouette does. Survive off the back of Ooze Coop. A lot of flipping around, and then look at that landing. Just plants it and slides back almost to the crates. And that's one of the reasons the Silver Slivers are in this competition. Let's see if the FL Racer can pull off the same kind of thing for Jet Street. FL Racer does indeed, goes even farther than Silhouette, bounces, flips, almost looks like a drill going into the ground, and then bounces off the back of Silhouette and lands it flawlessly. That was amazing. This is a team to watch, folks. Jet Streak have got something special. Street Cleaner's up now for Industrial. Ooh, nice bound off the back of Ooze right there. Manages to come back and looks fairly stable. We'll see if he's able to maintain that position after Corvette C7 comes down for the Hot Racers. Whoa, the Corvette did not go off the back of Ooze Coop. I did not think the front of that thing was low enough to prevent it from going off the back. And now Street Cleaner is sideways. Let's take another look at this. I think his front bumper must have hooked onto the back of the car and somehow prevented him from doing the jump. It still doesn't look like it would really work, but but it did. Porsche 962 is up now. Oh man, look at that. After that amazing hit on the back of Ooze Coop, that Corvette just gets tossed up in the air and does not recover. But if you look down to the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see the Mini, his teammate, recover. Now the Porsche is sideways up on top of Stinger there. And unfortunately he took one of the few cars that was able to not go off the back of Ooze Coop. So not a super productive takedown right there. X-Steam's up now for the Void Runners. 
X Steam goes catapulting all over the place, and this car has some agility. Look at this recovery. Hits the ground, bounces, and makes a perfect recovery right back on his feet again. Knocks over all the fences. Sits over there by FL Racer as if to challenge him. Good run by X Steam. Tail Dragger's up now for Cookie. Tail Dragger takes a massive leap off the back of Ooskoop, and I've got bad news for a Cookie. That car looks like it might just be sideways over against the crates over there. Deli Dairy Truck's up now, Barnstormers. The Deli Dairy Truck just flops over sideways and gives up. Honestly, a pretty lackluster attempt right there by the Deli Dairy Truck. Barnstormers gotta be kinda disappointed with that. I have a feeling if they come back, they're not gonna have him on the team anymore. Star Lord's up now for Guardians. Star Lord, oh man, that is rough, goes right off the back. Now this is a car that was a huge boon for the Guardians. That back was uh, great for stopping other cars from getting past. And unfortunately, it looks to me, yep, like he landed sideways over there. And uh, with that car potentially out, they are in big trouble. Speaking of big trouble, here is a hard day's night. Was the ace in the hole for this team in their qualifier? And not this time, oh man. That is bad! Goes all the way down to the cab of transport and just flips right upside down. That was a car they could not eliminate in the qualifier. And it's gone in the first round. And the Lonely Hearts Club vans are in deep trouble right here. Right now, I'm not even sure I see one of their vehicles that's right side up. Silver Bullet for Silver Slivers. Silver Bullet takes a tumble and it does not go well. Silver Bullet is the final car of this round and he is out. Tough car to eliminate, but a lot of these cars were tough cars to eliminate. This round has been a bloodbath. Look at all the cars that are sideways and upside down. What a mess. And I'm getting word from the officials that 31 cars have been eliminated in round one. That is a new record for Junkyard Joust. Taking a look at the aftermath, Jetstreak has something to boast about here. They lost not a single car. Crimson lost three and Industrial lost three. Hot Racers and Void Runners both lost two. Cookies Crime Syndicate lost three, including Cookie. Barnstormers are out. Guardians of the Junkyard are out and the Lonely Hearts Club vans are out. Another record for Junkyard Joust. Three teams eliminated in one round. Jet Streak is on top five points, one for each car remaining. Silver Slivers getting four and then you go down to two. All the teams that weren't eliminated in this round have two cars remaining. And look at this, over half the cars that never got eliminated during the qualifiers got eliminated in round one of this match. And here is your all-important running order for round two. It's decided on randomness and how many cars you have left. Jetstreak had five, so they automatically start first, and then random luck of the draw decided the rest of the order. Something to pay attention to here, Cookie's Crime Syndicate's going before industrial accidents, which means it's entirely likely that Oozcoop is going to go down before the helicopter transporter. That could be very influential on how this round plays out. Speaking of Cookie, it looks like she's replaced her car with one of those cows. That just doesn't seem like a safe place for a baby, honestly, but uh, baby Cookie's pretty tough. Silhouette 2 now for the Slivers. Ooh, a nice hit there from Silhouette, and the Slivers are angry. They are taking it right to the jet streak, and that is gonna probably be it for the Formula E gen. That was a nice hit. And speaking of nice hits, here comes the Solaire. Solaire does what Solaire is so good at, assassinates one of the best cars in Junkyard Joust. Silhouette might be able to recover from that, but I don't think it's too likely. That was devastating for the Slivers. Morris Mini's up now for the Hot Racers. The Morris Mini takes it to the back of Solaire and locks it in nicely on the track. So far, this round has been brutal. These teams are pulling out all the stops to take out their competition. Next up for the Void Runners, it's Alien. Alien slams into the back of the Mini and the rebound causes Solaire to go flying off the track. Upside down, cannot make a recovery. Wow, another devastating blow on a car that is hard to kill. Oozcoop is up now for Cookies Crime Syndicate. Oozcoop takes his position after nudging the Mini off the track, and we've got the ramp back in place, folks. It was already bad enough, and now it's just gonna get nastier. And they are right up by the crates this time, so you're gonna see some cars driving right into the steel wall of those crates. 
NASA anteaters up now. The anteater just smashes into the crates, goes right off the back of Ooze Coop, hits, actually hits Evil Weevil and bounces off. It looks like he picked up a hay bale there from the track. And unfortunately, he is down and sideways and it looks like Silhouette did not recover. Man, Snow Patrol's up now for Jet Streak. Snow Patrol, oh man, cannot pull off the grace that he did in round one and hits the crates, goes sideways, and there's a chance he could recover from that, but another potentially devastating takedown. Riley and Scott, look at the low front on this. Is it gonna go under the ooze coop? We're about to find out. Riley and Scott cannot get underneath it. No matter how low that you are, you, you just never know what's gonna happen. And it, it, it kind of bumps it. It looks like he's gonna go underneath, but then keeps going. Drives off fairly safe though right now at least. And here comes the Ferrari. Remember what this guy's capable of. The Ferrari flies off the back of that coupe, bounces nicely off the crates, and is still right side up off to the side. So a uh, fairly decent hit there for Ferrari. Holograms up now for the Hot Racers. This thing has pretty good balance. A short jump and a slam, and Hologram is on his head. That is probably going to do it for the Hologram. A rough bounce right there. But sometimes that's all it takes. Here comes X-Team for the Void Runners. X-Team has handled these kind of things before. Oh no, X-Team hits the crates and flips upside down. The crates proving to be the downfall for X-Team and that spot up at the front of the track is becoming a wasteland yet again. Another probable elimination. Void Runners would be down to one if that were the case. Fast cash now for the crime syndicate. Fast Cash leaps off the back of Ooze Coop, hits those crates, looks like he's gonna make it, but then takes one bad flip, and he's upside down. Cookie's gotta be disappointed with that. That's their own teammate got eliminated right there off the back of Ooze Coop. And here comes Helicopter Transport. Gotta go off the back of Ooze Coop. Can't set up that jump when you have to go off the back of another ramp. And look at this. I may have been wrong. The jump is sort of in position. Is it sort of a double jump? In any case, the Transport's fine. Jet Threat 4 is up now. Jet Threat hits the back of Ooze Coop, and if I'm not mistaken, that was a double jump. We've got two ramps set up. How is that even possible? And look at that Jet Threat handling that magnificently, landing right side up, right over by the Ferrari. That was an impressive jump, and it looks like the double jump is displaced now, but it was there for a minute. That was crazy. Tomb up. Tomb up zooms off the back of Ooze Coop, and I didn't even see whether you landed right side up. It was so fast, and nope, that would not be right side up, although it's close. There is a chance of recovery on this, it looks like to me, but we'll see what happens. It's got to be more right side up than it is sideways, and right now that's looking to me like more sideways, so we'll see what happens. Jet Threat 3. Jet Threat 3 takes another nice jump, is actually upside down when he hits the crates, but then turns it back around off the cab of that transport. Good run for him. Stinger. Stinger manages to up and the Ooze Coop. Almost gets him off the track. The Ooze Coop is now in danger. Stinger is a deadly car for these ramped vehicles. Always interesting to see what happens with that. FL Racer now. FL Racer just hits the back of Stinger and actually goes off the track. Just off the back of Stinger. Now that was kind of unexpected. And the Ooze Coop is looking pretty right now. Fairly safe there on top of Solaire. But Stinger could still do some damage if there were any more cars coming down. But there's not. That was the end of round two. And what a round it was. Jet Streak lost two in that round. All four of the other teams listed here each lost one. They're still in this match. And the Silver Slivers lost two that round. They are now down to two. Cookie's Crime Syndicate is just down to the Ooze Coop. Things are really starting to heat up here, folks. Three cars and two points apiece is gonna give the Jet Streak a total of 11 over the Silver Slivers, who have eight. Everyone else has four, if they're still in this match. A few more perfect records were ended, but we still have five cars who have not been eliminated. Running order is gonna start off with the Jet Streak again, followed by Silver, and Randomness has decided Cookie goes third. We could be facing another round of Ooze Coop Rampage. 
Right now, Jet Threat 4 hits the track first. Silver Slivers have to be a little perturbed about what Jet Streak is doing in this match. It looks a lot like what Silver Slivers do normally in these matches. And they're sending down Riley and Scott now. I think they're going to attempt to take out Jet Threat with the undercutter ability of this car. They almost do it. Look at that. He wobbles a little bit, but stays on the track. It's still a very precarious position to be in. And here comes the Ooze Coop. The Ooze Coop pops Jet Threat up in the air, but Jet Threat is used to being in the air. You know, it's kind of a jet. And Ooze Coop locks it in nicely on the track. This is going to be trouble for all the other teams. Here comes the Ferrari. He wasn't able to avoid the ramp on the Ooze Coop before. Let's see if he can do it this time. And no, he can't. And he can't avoid getting hung up on that safety rail at the front of the track. Hits the crates and comes over sideways. Pretty unlikely he's going to recover from this, but it's not out of the realm of possibility with all the flying cars that are coming down the track. Here comes Alien. Alien flies off, hits those crates, and bounces right back sideways. That's two cars now that have landed in this unlikely sideways position after going off the back of Ooze Coop. And if Alien stays in that position and it is eliminated, there is another perfect record down the drain. Speaking of perfect records, here's Helicopter Transport. Can anyone eliminate this thing? Helicopter transport goes off the back of Oozcoop and just smothers him like a giant metal blanket. He just sits on top of Oozcoop and potentially replaces the ramp with his own ramp. Let's see if the Morris Mini can do anything about that ramp. Oh, the Mini goes flying off the back of that ramp just like usual. Flies all the way up to the front of the crates. Looks like he's going to land it. Hits the Ferrari and can't quite turn over. And if I'm not mistaken, I think we may have just lost two teams on that one jump. Looks like Crimson Crashers and Hot Racers are probably out of this match. And if Alien doesn't go upright, then Void Runners are out too. Let's see what happens here. Jet Threat pushes underneath the ramp of the transport. Finally, somebody has gotten that ramp off the track. The transport doesn't look like it's really threatened here, but uh, Alien just tipped over upside down, and that is going to end the Void Runner's chances in this match. Stinger's up. Stinger takes out Jet Threat 3. That is a big coup for the Silver Slivers. They needed to do something here, and that was a bold move from Stinger, knocking out Jet Threat 3 and then going up on top of Ooze Coop. But now FL Racer has a chance to take Stinger out for the Jet Streak, and he cannot do it. In fact, he makes a huge mistake and goes under Stinger and hits the side of Evil Weevil and takes himself out of the match. And that was another devastating round. Five out of the ten cars eliminated. Here's the aftermath. Jet Streak lose two in that round and are down to just Jet Threat 4. Industrial Accidents, of course, just has the helicopter transporter. And look at this, Silver Slivers back on top with two cars left. Cookie's Crime Syndicate is still in this with the Ooze Coop. Taking a look at the scoreboard, Jet Streak and Silver Slivers are tied at 14 apiece, and Cookie and Industrial are tied at 7 apiece. It's a pitched battle between Jet Streak and the Silver Slivers right now. Only three of these four teams can move on to the finals. Only Jet Threat 4 and Helicopter Transport still have a perfect record going into round four. And the running orders up for round four, Industrial Accidents with a little luck of the draw here are going to be going second. That could be a big thing. Of course it'll be a big thing. Think about about who we're talking about here. Riley and Scott Mark III are going down first for the Silver Slivers, a substitution that's proving itself to be very valuable in this match as it takes its place right down in the middle of the track. Doesn't make it too far down, Evil Weevil. Barely having to buffer anything there. And now it's time for helicopter transport. All the remaining cars that are coming down are gonna have to go off this jump. And helicopter transport actually takes out the Riley Mark III, that was very unexpected. You would have thought that car would be safe right there, but something about the placement of where it was maybe made it more susceptible to that hit. And now the ramp is set up and the Silver Slivers just lost what they hoped would be a certain survival for that round. Jet Threat 4 is going to take the lead first. 
Jet Threat 4 flips over the top of the cab, gets hung up on those exhaust pipes, and cannot make the landing. Lands right up front, upside down. Barring some sort of miraculous recovery, the only hope that Jet Streak has right now is that the remaining two cars that are coming down the track get eliminated, and then they'll still be in the finals. Here comes the Ooze Coop. If the Ooze Coop can make this jump, it's gonna stay in this match. Ooze Coop hops the ramp and runs into the back of transport and just flops off upside down. Ooze Coop finally met its match on the back of that helicopter transport and Baby Cookie does not look happy. Stinger is the last car of this round. Will Stinger be able to prevent the jump? He's done it before and no, he's not able to. He hits the back of helicopter transport flies into the cab, flips upside down, a similar thing that Jet Threat 4 did, and flips upside down. Helicopter transport has effectively eliminated all of the other vehicles from this match. Some of the best competitors that the Junkyard Joust has ever seen, and they were all wiped out by helicopter transport. Can anyone take helicopter transport out? It remains to be seen. With the elimination of all the other cars, Industrial Accident is the only team that's gonna get points this round, and they get four because it's round four. That's gonna put them up to 11. Jet Streak and Silver Slivers remain tied at 14 to 14. So while the transport may have survived, Jet Streak and Silver Slivers tied each other cannot best each other in this match. So Jet Streak and the Silver Slivers will both take first and Industrial Accidents is gonna take second. Helicopter Transport, the only one with a perfect record anymore. <laughs> Tonight's MVP might come as a little bit of a surprise to you, but it's the Ooze Coop. Helicopter Transport was great, sure, but Helicopter Transport only ended 14 of the 50 cars. Ooze Coop is responsible for 23 out of the 50 cars that were eliminated in this match. And that's why Ooze Coop is... The first three teams of the Junkyard Joust Finals have been determined, but we've still got two heats left to find our remaining seven teams. Returning champs Emerald Undercurrent take on a whole slate of new teams next time, and then Graveyard Smash and Creature from the Black Lagoon are taking on some familiar faces and some brand new ones in Heat 3. After what we just witnessed in this match, I cannot wait for these next two matches. It's going to be a lot of fun, and I hope you'll join me for it. Please consider becoming a patron. Patreon.com slash Junkyard Joust. Sponsor a car or just see all the new cars that I get on a regular basis. Thanks for watching, and good night. Ten teams battled their way through the qualifiers to get to this point, the Junkyard Joust main event, heat number two. Hi everybody, I'm your announcer Aaron Yanda. Last season's world champions, the Emerald Undercurrent, are back to defend their title and hopefully make it to the finals again if they're lucky. But there's nine other teams that want to get into that final as well and they are going to face some stiff competition. Let's take a look at who's competing today. First up, it's the Emerald Undercurrent. This team of low, lightweight cars surprised everyone in Season 1 and managed to take the crown. They were allowed to substitute one car from their team out, and they have chosen Tire Fryer to replace the Painos. The other four competitors are Eye Candy, Salt Shaker, Berserk, and of course, Lamelt, the main reason Emerald Undercurrent is here right now. Massive Transit blew through the competition in their qualifier with a combination of long and heavy vehicles. With the Cadillac Escalade, the Articulated Bus, the UBE Industries Double Trailer, Transporter, and the Mini Bago. The Caped Cruisers are a team of undercutters with a couple surprises up their sleeves. Featuring Cloak and Dagger, Ground Effects, the Bishop, Superman, and Aquaman. The Shredheads are a team of lightweight survivors that won their qualifier. Featuring 24 Hours, Carbide, Voltage Spike, Track Ripper, and Cyber Speeder. They See Me Rollin' is a flashy team with a lot of variety in their ranks, which makes them survivors. Featuring this bejeweled 53 Cadillac, the Revrod, MVP of its qualifier, the 77 Dodge Van, Papa Wheelie and Rising Heat. The Copperheads are a team of unpredictable cars causing copper chaos wherever they go. With Nucleon, the Chrysler Atlantic, Triple Threat, the 55 Jukebox, 
and Custom Spoiler. Wiener Magic is a team that coasted to success with the help of their famous members. With the Wienermobile, Starsky and Hutch, the DeLorean, Ecto-1, and Yoda. Junkyard Domestic Market is a team of Japanese vehicles with a secret weapon. The Skyline GTR, the 86, Honda NSX Type R, the Aquarium Truck, and the Sakura Sprinter, which has a secret weapon in the back, the Mazda 787B. Forklift and Friends is a team of wild vehicles that feature Forklift and his antics, with, of course, Forklift, the Ford Box Truck, the Garbage Truck, Toe Jam, and Rocket Oil. Santa's Slayers is a team that showed up back around the holidays, but they survived the qualifier, so they're here now. With Rockin' Santa Sled, Santa's Hot Tub, Big Chill, the 55 Chevy Townsman, and Screamliner. The rules for Junkyard Joust are simple, survive. Each team takes turns sending a car down the track. The teams get to choose which car they send down, and that's where the strategy comes in. If you're sideways or upside down at the end of the round, you're out. Each team gets points for each car that they have left at the end of a round. Here's a chart that shows who you guys think is gonna win this match. Massive Transit, 38%, over Emerald Undercurrent at 23, and Junkyard Domestic Market at 14%. Well, let's get this match started and find out if you were right. Today's running order Order is up, so we're gonna start off with They See Me Rolling with the 77 Dodge Van. This van showed a lot of survivability in its qualifier round and uh, did a great job for its team. Next up is Superman for Caped Cruisers. The literal Man of Steel slams into the back of that van and takes his place on the track. Custom Spoiler's got a little bit of undercutting for the Copperheads here. Custom Spoiler does indeed go right under both of the cars on the track, but does not manage to eliminate either of them. Next up is the Sakura Sprinter. Junkyard Domestic Market sending down their secret weapon already this early in the match. This is gonna be a factor. And it deploys flawlessly and even knocks Superman upside down and almost off the track. A lot of people curious how that Mazda plays into if this vehicle gets eliminated or not. I like to think of that Mazda as just an, a bumper for that truck that's just lying on the track. So the status of the Mazda does not apply to whether or not that truck's eliminated. Ecto-1's up first for Wiener Magic. Ecto-1 takes the plunge and look at that recovery. Hits the back of the truck and somehow manages to go upright. That low center of gravity really paying dividends for the Ecto-1. Now Rocket Oil's going down for forklift and friends. They know that this heavy vehicle can handle a car like that Mazda. And it does exactly that. Look at that. Rocket Oil that lid on top of the car, whatever you want to call that. It flies up in the air. Pushes that Mazda back, almost back inside the truck. And now a big hit's coming from the articulated bus for Massive Transit. And it was a big hit. It was so big that it pushed Rocket Oil off the track. Rocket Oil was a vehicle that many thought could not be eliminated, and it's not looking good for him right now. Screamliner for Santa's Slayers slots nicely onto the track, pushes that Mazda back into the Sakura Sprinter a little bit. And I'm kind of still reeling from the fact that Rocket Oil was just pushed right off the track like that and eliminated. That was really not something that we expected to happen here. Now Track Ripper is pushing the articulated bus off of the Mazda into the truck almost. Buzzerk now for the Emerald Undercurrent. Buzzerk with that saw sends Track Ripper head over heels off the track. I think that saw got a piece of the bottom of his car and now he's upside down off the track and Buzzerk just goes off to the right, totally safe. Here's a look at all the vehicles that were never eliminated during the qualifying stage. It's always fun to keep track of which ones managed to keep their perfect record. Well, we already know Rocket Oil is out. 53 Cadillac now for They See Me Rolling. 53 Cadillac gives a nice big push to Screamliner and manages to get that articulated bus off the track. Now they're up to the Mazda behind that Sakura Sprinter. Cloak and Dagger now for Caped Cruisers. Cloak and Dagger pushes that Screamliner upside down on top of the bus. And there's a chance he could recover from that, but a good hit there from Cloak and Dagger. Now up 55 Jukebox for the Copperheads. Never eliminated in its qualifier. Jukebox gives a nice big hit and actually pushes one of They See Me Rollins' cars, that Cadillac, upside down. Just a lot of pressure there. The heaviness of that car squeezing those two together and causing some nice destruction. Now up for JD. It's the Honda NSX. 
The Honda takes it to the back of the jukebox, sends him right off the track, upside down. A great hit right there, and that car that was never eliminated, well, it's eliminated now, most likely. Starsky and Hutch now for Wiener Magic. Starsky and Hutch collides with two of the cars up front. Manages to get that Honda off the track, and the Cadillac is still upside down. A cloak and Dagger a little bit off the track on top of those buses, but safe for the moment. Ford box truck now for Forklift and Friends. The Ford box truck just smashes into the back of Starsky and flips right over. Too heavy in the front and flops over. Bad hit for Forklift and Friends there. Not a great job by that vehicle. Forklift may be a little disappointed in his friend. The Cadillac Escalade now for massive transit. This thing is heavy and long. A massive hit there from the Cadillac, but it doesn't really do that much. More than just kind of throw him off the track. Starsky just stays there, and that Escalade now is partially off the track. 55 Chevy Townsman for Santa Slayers. Watch out for that tree. And the tree goes flying, and so does the Escalade. Just drives straight off the track over the corpse of Track Ripper. And that tree is now up on top of the Mazda. Hopefully it's okay. And now the Cyber Speeder is going to take to the track for the Shredheads. Cyber Speeder doesn't get a lot of action right there. Does a little pushing, but can't go anywhere. But slotted into the track fairly nicely. Now up for the Emerald Undercurrent. It's going to be Eye Candy. Eye Candy pushes Cyber Speeder straight off the track, upside down. A nice, gentle little tug. And he's done. He's totally upside down, might not be able to recover from that. Papa Wheelie now, for they see me rolling. Papa Wheelie just slams into Eye Candy, sends him skittering across the Sakura Sprinter, and Eye Candy recovers, but unfortunately, Papa Wheelie does not. And now here comes Aquaman for the Caped Cruisers. Good slam there from Aquaman, hits the back of that Townsman, pushes it back up by the tree that already came off of the top of it. Maybe he'll be able to retrieve that now. Next up for the Copperheads, it's the Chrysler Atlantic. The Chrysler pops into the back of Aquaman, pushes that Townsman off the track a little bit. Not a whole lot of other action there. It also looks like Cloak and Dagger starting to go sideways over there. Skyline GTR now for JDM. Skyline plows into the back of the Chrysler and takes his place on the track. Nice slotted in. Pretty good spot right there for him. Yoda's up now for Wiener Magic. Yoda flops upside down on his face after hitting the Skyline in the back. The Skyline has pushed forward a little bit on top of other cars, but it's okay. And Aquaman's starting to go up a little bit. Garbage truck now for Forklift and Friends. Let's see if he can do better than that box truck. And he does a little bit better. He plows three cars off of the track, pushes the box truck completely upside down, and drives off. But he is a halfway to being sideways here, so it could be bad for him. The UBE Industrials double trailer, 145 grams. Get ready for a large hit. That was huge. Look at the cars go flying. The Chrysler just pops upside down, still on the track. Aquaman flies over in the tires, and the garbage truck makes a recovery. So mixed results there for the UBE. Rockin' Santa Sled now for Santa Slayers. Rockin' Santa Sled hits the back of that heavy vehicle and just dumbly pops upside down and goes off the track, dead. That was a waste of a turn there for Santa Slayers. Oh well, on to Carbide for the Shredheads. Carbide hits the back of UBE and cannot do anything. That thing is too heavy and he goes backwards. Now he's gonna take a big hit here from the big one himself, Lamelt for Emerald Undercurrent. What's Lamelt gonna get up to? Lamelt sends Carbide off the back of UBE, but Carbide makes a nice recovery for the moment. And now we've got Lamelt set up on the track. Rising heat. Gonna try to get under him, does it. Goes all the way under Lamel and pushes him off the track, perhaps neutralizing that threat. That was a great hit there for They See Me Rolling. The Bishop is up now for Cape Cruisers. Oh man, what a hit! The Bishop pops the top off of his vehicle. That hit was so hard. But the bottom of his car keeps going and Rising Heat gets popped up and almost off the track, but he's still on it. And look at the bottom of that car. It's got a little ramp in the back too and the shell of the car is still on the track. It's gonna get in the way for triple threat for the Copperheads. Let's see what happens. 
triple threat sends the shell of that car just flying and goes flying himself. Part of his engine falls out and then somehow he makes a recovery. After all that, he just flops right over and he's like, yeah, it was nothing, no problem. I'm the best. Amazing hit there for Triple Threat. Aquarium truck now for JDM. Aquarium truck just a little bit too heavy in the front. Flips over on the back of the Bishop and is sideways. There's still a chance he could uh, recover from that because he's still on the track. DeLorean now for Wiener Magic. Let's go back to the future. The DeLorean slams into the aquarium truck and just knocks him senseless off the track sideways and then sort of drives off himself probably to safety. Now we still got the ramp set up on the back of uh, Bishop forklift now for forklift and friends forklift oh man that's tough to see forklift who's had all this agility in previous encounters cannot manage to get off the back of that car successfully and just flops over sideways very disappointing hit there for forklift mini bago now for massive transit Mini Bago knocks the Bishop all the way up to the crates, just sends him through the air up to level seven. Annihilates that vehicle. Did he make a recovery though? He did not. He's upside down and Mini Bago is sideways, but wow, what a hit there. Santa's hot tub. Santa hits the back of Mini Bagos, not going anywhere. He's just gonna sit there on the track. They're all locked in on the track because of those massive transit vehicles. Shredheads now are gonna send down the 24 hours. 24 hours knocks Santa off the track, but uh, he's safe and he can't really do much else. So he's just gonna sit there. Salt Shaker for Emerald Undercurrent. Salt Shaker doesn't do much just pushes into the back of 24 hours and backs up a little bit. Not a whole lot of action for him. And now he's gonna take a hit from the Rev Rod, or they see me rolling. Rev Rod, the MVP of this qualifier, could not be eliminated. Rev Rod annihilates Salt Shaker, sends him up towards triple threat, but he makes a nice recovery. The lightness of that car, making him a little bit more stable in, as he's hurled through the air. Ground effects for Cape Cruisers. Ground effect slides underneath the rev rod, pops him up on top of Mini Bago, and now that car is upside down. The rev rod is upside down. Is he just toying with us? He might be. Nucleon now for the Copperheads. Ooh, a nice pop from Nucleon into the back of ground effects, and it actually has a chain reaction effect. And of course, you knew it, Rev Rod has recovered, no problem. And now the 8.6 is up for Junkyard Domestic Market. The 8-6 knocks Nucleon off the track, but Nucleon makes an impressive recovery. And now that 8-6 is starting to go underground effects. The Wienermobile is up now for Wiener Magic. Wienermobile hits the back of 8-6, pushes him forward a little bit, and ground effects is getting moved off the track. Toe Jam for forklift and friends. Ooh, Toe Jam slides underneath the Wienermobile and puts him up in the air and then he lands sideways and I don't know if he's gonna be able to recover from that. The 8-6 is balanced precariously right now. Transporter is up now for massive transit. This is a fairly heavy vehicle. And the Transporter transports itself right off the track and sideways and probably out of this match. He got caught up on the back bumper of Toe Jam, kinda got hooked there and then was forced backwards off the track almost certainly out of the match big chill now for santa's slayers this thing's got skis instead of wheels on the front oh big hit there from big chill in the back of mini bago and all it does is send the 86 more off the track and upside down mini bago just going down the track sideways now but not going off the track voltage spike takes it to the back of big chill and big chill manages to get those skis underneath mini bago and stay alive in this match and it's the final car of the round, the brand new tire fryer for Emerald Undercurrent. The Undercurrent hoping that this car will do better than the Paynos did for them. And it does a great job of eliminating that big chill vehicle from the match. That was the end of the round. Let's take a look at the wreckage. There's been quite a few cars taken out in this round. A total of 21 cars eliminated, but Emerald Undercurrent does not have any of those. Cape Cruisers lost two, Shredheads two, They See Me Rolling two, and Copperheads two.
Big losses for Santa Slayers, Forklift and Friends, and JDM. Massive Transit and Wiener Magic only lost two apiece. Taking a look at the scoreboards, the Emerald Undercurrent are topping the board with five points, of course. One point for each of their surviving cars. And then it's mostly threes on down to the twos. Running order is up for round two. We're going to start off with the Emerald Undercurrent, who had an amazing first round. Not surprised. They are the world champions of season one. Lamelt is going to start us off and head on down almost to the front of the track. The back of that car is a threat to most vehicles. Let's see if Cloak and Dagger can overcome it. Cloak and Dagger does actually manage to overcome the back of that car, kind of wedging it in between the bumper and the front of his car. And uh, he's kind of propped up on the side of the track there. Curbside could be a problem. Nucleon piles into the back of Cloak and Dagger and almost goes sideways off the track but at the last second manages to make a recovery. But uh, he's kind of prone right now, so that could be an issue when this giant heavy double trailer smashes into him. The UBE just annihilates Cloak and Dagger and Nucleon. Cloak and Dagger split into two pieces, both of them upside down, and I don't even see Nucleon. Where did Nucleon go? Rising Heat up now for They See Me Rolling. Rising Heat pushes the UBE trailer, which was sideways, upside down. That's a tough loss right there. And there's Nucleon hiding underneath, right side up. Amazing. And now the Ecto-1's gonna hit the track for Wiener Magic. The Ecto-1 takes Rising Heat off of the track completely, but Rising Heat makes a nice recovery there. And now the Ecto-1 is propped up on the back of Lamelt. It could be a problem, but maybe not for that vehicle. Carbide now. Carbide hits the Ghostbusters up on top of Lamelt. And the Ecto's just gonna sit there. It's just gonna park right there, I think. Forklift and friends are gonna send down the garbage truck next. Heavy hit from the garbage truck, but there's nowhere to go, and he almost flips over, but manages to make a recovery halfway off the track. Not a bad hit there. Secure a sprinter now for JDM. They got the secret weapon, and they know how to use it. The Sakura Sprinter slams into the Carbide and pushes him up now where the Ecto-1 was. Garbage truck is relatively safe, and the secret weapon does not deploy. All right, I guess they don't know how to, to uh, use their secret weapon after all. Santa's Hot Tub is going to smash into that Mazda in the back of the Sakura Sprinter, and it's starting to deploy, kind of on top of Santa's hot tub. I don't know how much help that's gonna be. Buzzerk's gonna hit the road for Emerald Undercurrent. Here comes the saw. And I don't even know what happened there. Not much. I guess the Mazda was just pushed out of the back of the truck. And it seems like that secret weapon has been disabled. Nice job there by those teams. Cape Cruisers now are gonna send down Aquaman. Aquaman takes Berserk out. He's upside down, but he's not off the track, so we, uh, it remains to be seen what exactly will happen to Berserk right there. Now look at this. Santa's hot tub has parked inside that truck. I don't know if there's a much safer place you're gonna find on the track. That's an amazing job there by Santa Slayers. That car will be around next round. And triple threat slams into Aquaman. Actually makes Berserk go right side up, so not a very successful hit there by triple threat. Just basically saved two cars from uh, being eliminated. Cadillac Escalade now, 106 grams of heavy steel. The Cadillac Escalade just annihilates Triple Threat, hops him up into the air over and over, and he bounces and he bounces like a top, and then he goes upside down, that engine falls out again, and then look at this, he pops over right side up. How is that even possible? What an amazing play there by Triple Threat. That car is crazy. 77 Dodge Van now for They See Me Rolling. He just pops into the back of that Escalade and pushes Santa farther into the Sakura Sprinter, but there's really nowhere to go when you got a big vehicle like that on the track. So far this round, a lot of survivors out there on the track right now. Starsky and Hunt for Wiener Magic. Oh, ouch, the 77 Dodge van cannot survive the impact from Starsky and Hutch, and it is now sideways on the side of the track. Good hit there from Starsky and Hutch. Starsky and Hutch gonna take a voltage spike now, and they get spiked indeed, but manage to stay on the track. Voltage spike also locked into the track. Cars are backing up. Here comes Toe Jam for Forklift and Friends. 
Toe Jam smacks into the back of Voltage Spike, puts him off the track, but not upside down. But all it would take is one little tap to push him sideways, so we'll see what happens there. And now we're gonna see the Honda NSX go down for JDM. The Honda almost gets Toe Jam off the track, but Toe Jam manages to stabilize at the last second and stick it, but he's curbside, so that could be bad. Chevy Townsman got that tree back up top. The Chevy Townsman knocks NSX off the track, but he survives, and Toe Jam is in a little bit of trouble right there. A tree managed to stay on top of the car. That's pretty good. Salt Shaker for Emerald. Salt Shaker causes some action way up front. If you see Carbide actually falls off the track, but is fine. And it looks like Toe Jam is probably gonna be okay. Ground effects with that low front now for Cape Cruisers. Oh boy, look at that car go up in the air, probably to a level seven, maybe even an eight. But this time Salt Shaker is not able to recover and he's upside down up on top of Aquaman there. Great hit there for ground effects. May have just gotten the first elimination for Emerald Undercutters. Custom spoiler slides underneath ground effects and pops that townsman up in the air and sideways. Doesn't look good for the townsman right now, but ground effects is probably out. Yep, he's out. And now custom spoiler is locked into the track, but that's a tough position for ground effects to be in right now because articulated bus. Articulated bus annihilates three of the cars on the track. Most of them survive, it looks like. Yep, all three of them made a recovery. Ground effects is recovery being the most impressive right there. And speaking of impressive recoveries, it's Rev Rod. Rev Rod just does a nice hit on the back of that bus, takes his position on the track. Is he gonna get tossed up in the air? Well, we're about to find out. The DeLorean's gonna hit him in the back. DeLorean smashes Rev Rod over the top of the bus and Rev Rod makes a supremely easy recovery. Just pops right over there. You can't really do anything to that vehicle. And we're down to the last three cars of round two. 24 hours for the shred heads. Can't do much. Just hits the back of the DeLorean and doesn't do anything else. It's a nice solid line of vehicles on the track right now. Emerald Undercurrent has the next two cars because they had five left. They're going to have to play against their own team. Tire Fryer is going to take a hit. And bam, 24 hours goes flying through the air, lands it though, lands it right side up on one of his own teammates who is sideways currently. Eye Candy is the final car for this round. And Eye Candy is careful enough not to end his own teammate, but he does end the DeLorean. That car was hard to eliminate in the qualifiers, but it's gone now. Let's take a look at the wreckage. Eight cars eliminated this round, which is not that many, all things considered. Take a look at the aftermath. Emerald loses their first car in Salt Shaker. They See Me Rolling only lost one that round. They are still doing pretty well. Everybody else has two left on this page. Cracks are starting to show in Santa's Slayers and Wiener Magic, each with only one vehicle apiece. Massive Transit is down to two, along with Forklift and JDM. Emerald Undercurrent continues to outpace its competitors with a total of 13 points. Copperheads fairly close behind at nine. All 10 teams and still a lot of cars in this match. There are a bunch of rounds left to come and that will be in the next episode of Junkyard Joust. These teams are gonna continue to battle for dominance in an epic match that's going quite a few rounds. I won't tell you how many. And then after that, we're gonna go on to main event heat three, where you're gonna see the return of Graveyard Smash and of course, Winnebago. Thank you to all my patrons. You are the reason I'm able to keep making this show and thank you all for watching. Keep an eye out for Junkyard Joust merch in the near future, it's coming. This has been Aaron Yanda. Have a great week and see you next time. There's just 21 cars left out of the 50 that started this round of Junkyard Joust, the main event. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Yanda, and welcome to the second half of Heat 2 of the main event. All 10 teams are still in this competition. Some of them only have one car left, but it's still anyone's match. A quick recap of the scores. Emerald Undercurrent are currently in the lead with 13 points, Copperheads at 9, and a lot of other teams tied in third place. But as usual, the key here is survival. Doesn't matter how many points you have, 
have if you have no cars left on the field. Fan predictions, 38% of Junkyard Joust fans have predicted that Massive Transit will win this particular match, followed by Emerald Undercurrent and then Junkyard Domestic Market. The running order is up. The Emerald Undercurrent are starting out this round with Berserk. There goes that saw blade. Emerald still has four cars in this match. The closest team to them right now is the Copperheads, who have three left, and they're gonna send down Nucleon. Nucleon, a nice hit there, sends Buzzerk off the track, but Buzzerk makes an excellent recovery. And Nucleon backs a little bit back down the track. That's going to be kind of a tough position. Aquaman could take advantage of this and send Nucleon right off the track. Aquaman cannot get Nucleon off the track. Look at that recovery. Nucleon flipping and flipping and landing right up in the front there, safe behind that safety bar. Amazing job there by Nucleon. Rising Heat smacks into Aquaman, gets a little bit underneath. That's definitely going to be a potential issue for Aquaman. Let's see if he can escape the peril that he's been put in by Rising Heat. Massive Transit. They've got two left. Here comes the Articulated Bus. Articulated Bus! Look at that hit! Wow! Cars are spinning everywhere, and did you see that? Right at the end, Nucleon gets flipped upside down. That is rough. It's not a safe spot after all. Rising Heat is upside down. And man, Aquaman makes a great recovery after being punted right off the track by that bus. Huge hit. And that bus is in a little bit of danger here. Let's see what happens when the Sakura Sprinter hits him in the back. Sakura Sprinter, ooh, he nudges the bus up into the crates and just kind of sticks him there and deploys the secret weapon successfully. Now it is going to be a different kind of track. Let's see what happens when the garbage truck hits the front of that vehicle for forklift and friends. Garbage truck just flies all the way over all the other vehicles. What a jump. That is amazing. And he lands right up in the front. Unfortunately, he did not make a recovery, and he's just kind of sitting there, done. Does not look promising, and the secret weapon remains deployed. But what a jump. Just a beautiful arc. Too bad he couldn't land it, but it is a garbage truck after all. 24 hours now for the Shredheads. 24 hours just pushes that secret weapon back up into the truck. He's not interested in going off of that thing and surviving a jump. He just pushes him out of the way. Santa's hot tub now for Santa Slayers. All the Santa Slayers team's hopes rest on this one remaining car that they've got in this match. They want Santa's hot tub to be safe on the track, and right now he's pretty well locked in. Just depends on what happens when the Ecto-1 plows into the back of him for Wiener Magic. Ecto-1! Oh man, that was a nice kill shot right there, and 24 hours gets flipped on his head on top of Santa's hot tub. It doesn't look like a great position to be in, but it's actually not bad. With a little pushing, he might recover. Here comes Eye Candy for the undercurrent. Eye Candy goes directly underneath Ecto, and Ecto, as usual, makes an amazing recovery. Just flips right, right side up off the top of Santa's hot tub. Great recovery, and there you go. 24 hours is about recovered. And here comes the stunt master himself, Triple Threat. Triple Threat takes Eye Candy straight out of this match. Look at that hit. Sends him on top of the Sakura Sprinter, but... Eye Candy cannot make the kind of stunt recovery that Triple Threat can. The Copperhead's being very aggressive here and really trying to make a dent in Emerald Undercurrent's numbers in this match. But Triple Threat is going to have to survive another threat here. Ground Effects is going to go right under him. And it does, but look at that recovery! Triple Threat can survive any kind of hit! Look at how many times he spins in the air and, of course, lands it perfectly. You just can't take him down. So many times we've seen Ground Effects just assassinate cars when they hit him like like that but it doesn't work not with triple threat amazing recovery copperhead's got to be pleased rev rod speaking of amazing recoveries here he comes rev rod smashes into ground effects starts to push him off the edge he's basically curbside right now that could be bad we'll see what happens oh boy this is gonna be interesting get ready for a lot of cars to take flight here folks it's the cadillac escalade look out Cadillac Escalade! Wow, did you see that car fly? Ground Effects goes all the way up to the top of the heights chart and goes off the track. He's gone. Where did he even land? I, I think he landed in another county or something. We're going to have to 
This dude, okay, so he goes over the fence, completely over the fence, and there we go. This cutaway shot will show you he landed that somehow, and he is outside the bounds of where we can even get a camera shot. So uh, that's the first time that's ever happened before. He went outside the fence. So a huge hit there from the Escalade, but actually doesn't manage to take any cars out. That was an amazing recovery by ground effects. Here comes the Honda, and the Honda punches into the back of the Escalade, but can't really do anything except send Revrod a little bit farther off the track, but of course Revrod is fine over there, and the Honda backs all the way back up down the track. Toe Jam has to push him all the way back down into the Escalade. Honda didn't want to be anywhere near that vehicle, but now the tow truck has pushed him up there, and they are in position. Cars are backing up down the track right now. Next up for the shred heads, it's gonna be Carbide. Carbide just neatly plants himself right underneath Toe Jam. That was amazing. It's like he just stuck Toe Jam on top of himself to uh, protect himself or something, like a little helmet. Tire fryer now for the undercurrent. Tire Fryer takes Carbide and Toe Jam off the field, but uh, doesn't do any damage, and the Honda's over there. Now look at this. Santa's hot tub flips over right at the end. That is tragic. If he doesn't get flipped back over again, their team's out of this match. Custom Spoiler for the Copperheads. Custom Spoiler pushes into Tire Fryer, and that Escalade is in danger. Halfway off the track, just pulling off a balancing act there. Look at that. That's not going to be good. Oh, and look who's coming up next. Yeah, I'm worried about this. Oh, and one slick little maneuver later. Melt has taken out Custom Spoiler and knocked the Escalade sideways on the edge of the track. Melt was the final car for this round. Those cars are not going to get a chance to recover. They're done. And look at this. The articulated bus is out up in the front. That means that Massive Transit is out of this match. It's unbelievable. Everybody thought this team was going to do so well in this match, and look at this. They are out. A huge upset there by Lamelt. Emerald Undercurrent are now down to three. They see me rolling in Copperheads. Only have one apiece, as well as Wiener Magic and Forklift and Friends, and Junkyard Domestic got two left. Massive Transit and Santa's Slayers are out of this match. Unbelievable upset here. Emerald Undercurrent, 22 points. A pretty sizable lead at this point, and the Caped Cruisers and the Shredheads are tied with Copperheads and Junkyard Domestic Market one point behind them. And with the loss of Santa's Hot Tub, that is going to make it so only four of the reigning cars have a perfect record out of the starting 14. And the running order for round four is up. Emerald starting us out, followed by Caped Cruiser. Emerald sending down Berserk. This is becoming a bit of a tradition for them. But when you got something that works, then you keep doing it, and it's been working great for them so far. Berserk always surviving these initial hits. Aquaman's going to try to take him out again. Aquaman pushes Berserk off the track, and as usual, Berserk is fine. Cape Cruiser's got to be feeling pretty good about being tied for second place right now. They do not even appear on the fan favorites' predictions as surviving this match. They might have something else to say about that. Sakura Sprinter is up now for JDM. Will the secret weapon deploy? And it does not. He pushes up into Aquaman, but this kind of gently comes to a stop, and it's not enough force to get that secret weapon to pop out. And here comes 24 hours. He does not like that car, but look at this. He actually goes underneath it and forces the Mazda out. So now the secret weapon is deployed. This could be a bad move by 24 hours. Should have been a little bit more careful about where he hit right there, but now it's too late. Revrot's down next. Revrod just punches 24 hours off the track, but 24 hours, great recovery there. A full flip, and he lands on his feet, and Revrod kind of gets in position. I think there's going to be a launching of some sort. Revrod, pretty good at these things. Ecto-1. Ecto-1 sends the Revrod flag up in the air. Look at that jump. It's beautiful. He hits the crates, and he lands it. Unfortunately, look at this. Ecto-1, never been eliminated, just flops over on his side. The Ecto just ran out of gas and just could not get out of a bad position. We'll see if he can make a recovery. Toe Jam. Toe Jam pushes the Mazda secret weapon back up into the back of that truck and then goes under the ramp of the Sprinter. Now, I don't even think we've ever seen that happen before. That could make things very interesting. Speaking of interesting, triple threat. Nice hit on Toe Jam there. Pushes him off the track, but now that ramp is back down again. Right now, the Ecto-1, the only likely elimination in this round. Tire Fryer's gonna try to change that. Triple threat is lofted into the air and lands on top 
of the Sprinter. If if cars could be gymnasts, I think that Triple Threat would obviously be one of the best gymnasts around. It's just an amazing hit, and then he lands on top. It, where can't this car go? It, it's just testing the limits of physics, it seems like. Ground effects now. Ooh, and a devastating hit there from ground effects, and that is gonna put Tire Fryer on his head. That could be another casualty for Emerald Undercurrent right there. A great hit, and of course, Triple Threat lands on his feet off the top of that vehicle now. Honda NSX for JDM. The Honda snaps ground effects into the back of that Mazda, and he is about to be propelled off the track. It looks a little iffy right there. Let's see what Carbide gets up to. Carbide goes right under the Honda and just puts him on his back off the track. That was a professional hit job right there. Nice job, Carbide. And again, the final car of this round, round four, is going to be Lamelt. Lamelt doesn't do all the damage that Lamelt is known for. Manages to almost get ground effects upside down, but can't quite do it. So not as devastating as last round. Lucky for these teams. We are going to lose some cars, though. It looks like we lost the Ecto-1, the Honda, and Tire Fryer. That's three more cars out of this match. One of them for the undercurrent, which levels the playing field a little bit. Caped Cruisers and Shredheads both have two now. They see me rolling. Copperhead still got one left in this match. And Wiener Magic is now out because of the loss of the Ecto. JDM down to one, forklift still at one. Not a whole lot of movement on the scoreboards. Emerald still up there with 30. Caped and Shred still tied for second. And Copperheads and JDM tied for fourth. And then there were three. With the loss of Ecto, we just got the Sprinter, the Rev Rod, and 24 hours left on this list. Seven teams remaining. Let's go round five. We're going to start out with a different team than Emerald this time, finally. It's the Caped Cruisers starting out first. Sending down Aquaman. Aquaman slots into position nicely, and Lamelt is going down first this time. They're switching it up here at Emerald. And oh my, that is why they switched it up. Look at that perfect takedown. Lamelt just puts Aquaman on his back. Seize an opportunity and took it. That was nasty. Caped Cruisers are reeling from the loss of that car. Shredhead send down Carbide. Carbide cannot get underneath or go over. Lamelt just kind of sticks him in the back. But the Shredhead's got to be happy they've got something that can kind of counter the back of Lamelt there. Rev Rod now. Rev Rod smacks the back of Carbide. And if I'm not mistaken, it looks like those two cars up front might be stuck together. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, you can see the very front of Carbide kind of over the top, but then his bottom uh, fin is actually underneath. Looks like they're basically wedged together for the remainder of this round. We'll have to uh, get the crew out there to unstick them after this round is over. Next up is the Sprinter. Sprinter collides with Revrod, and Revrod makes a great recovery, and there goes the secret weapon out the back. So no casualties there, but now that Mazda is set up. Triple Threat is used to this threat. Can he handle it again? Triple Threat, oh no! I, I can't see him from behind the Sprinter. We're gonna have to get a better shot. There we go, and that does not look promising. If he stays in that position, his luck might have finally run out. That may have been the third threat. Toe Jam now for forklift. Toe Jam's front bumper collides with that Mazda and he doesn't take flight. Unfortunately, it might have been better if he had. That force kind of forced him off the track and now he's sideways and potentially out of this match. That would mean Forklift and Friends are also out of this match. Ground effects, a surprisingly ineffective hit on that secret weapon, but look at this. The Sprinter is curbside. I don't think we've ever seen that. That might be the first time the Sprinter has ever shown a weakness on the track. Buzzerk now. Buzzerk annihilates ground effects, and I've got bad news for the Caped Cruisers. Their hopes of being a part of this match any longer may have just ended. Shredheads are going with 24 hours. Final car of this round. 24 hours just does a little nudge to Buzzerk, and that is going to end the round, and this has been a devastating round. Three teams are out of this match after this round. Unbelievably, Cape Cruisers lost both of their vehicles this round. Copperheads lost Triple Threat. And Forklift and Friends lost Toe Jam. 
And that is gonna leave us with only six cars in this match. Emerald still sits atop the scoring with 40 points. Shredhead's at 31 now, decisively in second place, and two cars left. Junkyard down in third. And they see me rolling still in this match at 19. And then there were four. Two teams with two cars, two teams with one car. Shredhead's has two, and here comes Carbide. As he takes his place on the field of battle, this is round six, and all bets are off here. Lamelt is going down next. Emerald's still on top, and they can't quite take Carbide out. There's no bumpers getting stuck together this time, but Lamelt can't get Carbide off the track, but it could still happen. The Sprinter's up next. The Sprinter gonna have to survive going off the back of Lamelt unless that bumper is low enough to stop him from going off the back. And it is! In fact, it's so successful that he stomps on Lamelt and Carbide gets flipped upside down and the secret weapon deploys. A great run for the Sprinter there. That was very strategically powerful. Revrod does not go off the back of that Mazda, pushes him back up into the truck a little bit, but that secret weapon might already be neutralized just because of Revrod. Kind of an unexpected hit there. 24 hours? 24 hours! Oh my, look at this! The Rev Rod is catapulted over and over off the track, but as usual, bounces to perfection. Meanwhile, 24 hours flips upside down. This just happened to the Ecto-1 last round. Somehow Rev Rod can do this to cars. You might even call it the curse of the Rev Rod because every time someone hits that car, they end up upside down. And Buzzer goes flying up into the air. Look at that makes a great recovery after bouncing off the crates lands on rev rod and flips right over that is clutch right there and that my friends is gonna end this match shredheads lost both of their team members a team that's had an incredible ability to survive finally takes the fall in two in one round pretty unexpected and that is gonna give us our three finalists perfect record still remaining rev rod and of course the sprinter and looking at the scoreboard well there are our top three finalists. Now, the Shredheads have a lot of points. They are out of this match, unfortunately, but the fourth place team with the most points at the end of the semifinals will actually qualify to be in the finals. So we may not have seen the last of the Shredheads. Well, how did your predictions fare? Um, not too shabby, although Massive Transit uh, not living up to the hype. If you want to vote on who you think is going to win Heat 3, there is a link to the survey in the description of this video. Whoever guesses is the closest get surprise and now <laughs> twisting and turning spinning triple threat proved in this match that it is one of the most interesting cars to watch in junkyard joust despite parts of the car falling off and and pieces flying all over the place this car is an acrobat and it earned its place as today's <laughs> Three more teams are heading to the Junkyard Joust Finals. And I don't know about you, but I'm really curious to see how that Sprinter goes up against the Helicopter Transport. And it looks like the Silver Slivers are going to get their rematch against Emerald Undercurrent. Don't forget to vote for who you think is going to win the next main event. It's Heat 3, and these are our teams. Graveyard Smash is back. How is Creature from the Black Lagoon going to fare against these new teams? We'll find out next time. Don't forget to become a patron and support this show. Thank Thank you so much to all my current patrons. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time. Welcome to round three of the main event. It's Junkyard Joust, everybody. How you doing? I'm Aaron Yonda. Tonight, we are going to fill the remaining four slots and determine who is going to be in the finals. These 10 teams have all been through the qualifiers and shown that they have some skills, but do they have what it takes to go all the way? Let's look at our teams. Graveyard Smash went all the way to the finals last season, and they are back to try it again. But it looks like Frankenstein is missing. Maybe the bride of Frankenstein sent him packing. Anyway, he's being replaced by Dracula, who will literally be looking for blood on the track. Also with Bride of Frankenstein, a car that all the other teams have to be thinking about right now, Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Wolfman, and the Mummy. Winnebago Warpath has the biggest, heaviest vehicles we've ever seen on the track at Junkyard Joust. They're here to prove that they're worth their weight in gold. 
Featuring Winnebago with that new post-apocalyptic look. 147 grams. The Chieftain, 190 grams. Watch out for those zombies. The 1968 Dodge D100. The MBX Motorhome. And the Condor 2, 203 grams, the biggest vehicle ever to grace the track. The Speed Reapers dominated in their qualifier with a combination of agility and special implements on the front of some of these cars. They did very good for themselves, featuring Desert Racer, Grey Ghost, Musha Motors, Snake Oiler, and GRX. Like Batman himself, Bat Mobility proved in their qualifier that they have a combination of agility, strength, and some tricks up their sleeve that make them a worthy competitor. The classic Batmobile, a different Batmobile, and this Batmobile, and that Batmobile, and of course this Batmobile. Get your diamond pickaxes out because Mind Control proved themselves durable in the qualifiers, mainly due to Skeleton. Also featuring Creeper, Enderman, Zombie, and of course Spider with that flip down back. Parthenax's posse proved themselves mighty with their combination of unpredictable behavior and hard-hitting dragons, the 1996 Mustang GT, Purple Dragon, Silver Dragon, Blue Knight Dragon, and Purple Knight Dragon. With a little bit of undercutting, a car with a ramped back, and just a lot of survivability, Sunrunners 2 have proven that they are in it to win it. With the Chevrolet, Ozenberg, Flash Drive, 2016 Ford GT Race, and the Monta Racer. Another team with a nice variety of skills and abilities, it's Mr. Maroon, and they want back into the finals. With the Quad Rod, Bizarro, Tank Nader, Backslide, and Chevrolet Delara IndyCar. Five Alarms retooled team of fire trucks is better than ever, and they want into the finals. With the 1948 Taskmaster, Fire Engine, Snorkel Fire Engine, Blaze Buster, and Old Number Five. Pink Caddy is back with her very own team of tough old cars. The Joustin Jalopies with Pink Caddy, 56 Chevy Bel Air, Christine, the 55 Cadillac Coupe de Ville, and the Woody Surf Wagon. And now let's take a look at your predictions for this match. An overwhelming majority of you chose our third place champions from season one, Graveyard Smash, followed by Winnebago Warpath with 13% and the Sunrunners with about 11%. Here are all the competitors today that have perfect records. They were never eliminated in the qualifiers. And boy, I bet they'd like to keep that record perfect. The teams got to choose where they started in the running order based on how many points they scored in the qualifiers. Graveyard Smash, a returning champion from last season, got to choose first and they chose last. And the Speed Reapers got second choice they chose to go first with Musha Motors. Musha Motors does a little flopping up in the air off of the back of Evil Weevil. That was actually a, not a good start for them. That's gonna leave them prone on the track for the 96 Mustang GT to take advantage of for part of Nexus Posse. And the GT does but Musha survives quite nicely. Flips right over and lands it right side up on the side of the track. That's gonna be a good position to be in. Should be pretty safe. And now Mr. Maroon wants to strike while the iron is hot with backslide. Backslide slots into place and keeps that back nice and down low on the track. This is about to get interesting. Batmobile's going to go down first for Batmobility. Batmobile, ooh, takes a bad bounce and almost recovers, but then goes upside down. And that could be our first casualty of this round. It's like Enderman's going to take a crack at Backslide's ramp for mind control. Oh, a huge hit by Enderman right there. So massive, in fact, that it takes Backslide off the track. Enderman flips around after hitting the crates and can't quite make a recovery. And now Backslide is off the track. Enderman may have just done a service to the rest of the teams getting that car out of there. And Mr. Maroon's got to be a little bit disappointed with Backslide's performance. The 1968 Dodge D100 now for Winnebago Warpath. The Dodge slams into the back of that Mustang, bounces, and they both go backwards down the track a little ways. No damage there, but now that Dodge is nicely slotted into the track. Let's see if he can stay there. And he takes a hit from Christine from the Joustin Jalopies. A solid slam from Christine pushes both of those vehicles back up towards the front of the track, and Christine just stays right there, slotted in pretty safely. And now Blaze Buster's gonna take a crack for Five Alarm. 
Blaze Buster smashes into the back of Christine, pushes everybody up towards the front. A nice solid line of vehicles just in time for the Sunrunners to send down their menaced Ozenberg with that ramped back. This could cause trouble. Ozenberg, oh, a rough hit there, and Ozenberg has displaced a uh, curbside. That is not what the Sunrunners wanted for that car, and now the Mummy is going to take full advantage of it for Graveyard Smash. Mummy smacks into the back of Ozenberg, pushes it off the track. Pretty safe for the moment, but the Mummy is not in a good position there. That is a rough position to be in on the track. A big hit here from Grey Ghost could cause a lot of problems for Graveyard Smash already, and it does. That was a devastating blow from Grey Ghost. Takes out two cars on that hit. Blaze Buster is sideways, and so is the Mummy. And that's a tough car to make go sideways. That was a nice hit there from Grey Ghost. Blue Knight Dragon now for the posse. Blue Knight Dragon just knocks Grey Ghost flying, flipping around and flipping all over the place. And yet somehow Grey Ghost makes a spectacular recovery right over there by the body of Enderman. Good job for him, and now that Blue Knight Dragon could be in trouble, because it's Tanknader time. Tanknader squeezes Blue Knight Dragon in between Christine, and Blue Knight Dragon pops out and makes a nice recovery there. Low center of gravity helping out a lot. Tanknader curbside right now. Could be a problem. Let's see what happens when Batmobile smacks him. Batmobile, classic Batmobile, takes the Tanknader and throws him sideways on the track. Not necessarily a bad position to be in. We'll have to see what happens when Spider goes down the track. Spider plops into the back of Batmobile, and Tankinator is now sideways, just facing the other direction. And a lot of stuff is probably going to get smashed up on this one. It's Winnebago, 147 grams for the Warpath. Winnebago, wow, big hit there. But the only thing it does is succeed in pushing his own teammate almost upside down. A pretty good recovery by the dodge there. And Spider diffused a lot of that damage that Winnebago was trying to do on the track. 56 Chevy Bel Air next for the Justin Jalopies. The Bel Air slams into the back of Winnebago and there's nothing happening there. And now the Bel Air is curbside. Not a good position to be in. Couldn't go anywhere. That Winnebago is not going to move for anyone. Old number five. Huge collision there. Old number five just smacks into the Bel Air. And the Bel Air is almost forced off the track. I'm surprised there's not pieces of that car all over the place right now. Chevrolet now for the runners. The Chevrolet says, see you later to the Bel Air. Can't quite see it here, but there we go. Uh, overhead shot shows you that that car is done upside down on the side old number five is sliding off the track but not quite there and graveyard smash has decided that now is the time for creature from the black lagoon gonna try to set that ramp up creature slots in really nicely actually just annihilates the chevrolater old number five is fine off to the side and now creature is in position right behind winnebago what a solid place to park. Gonna be tough to get him out of there. GRX is up first, taking the plunge, and what a plunge it was. GRX goes all the way up to the front. Just a perfect jump. Completely perfect landing, and flips over and recovers nicely. Purple Dragon now for the posse is gonna take a jump. Purple Dragon goes flying all the way over Winnebago, over Spider, and lands on Tankinator. Tankinator still sideways up there, and the Purple Dragon, wow, just sits on top of Backslide. Always unpredictable, and an amazing landing there by the Purple Dragon. Now it's Quad Rod. Quad Rod, a nice little leap right over Winnebago, and plants it off to the left of the track. That was a great jump. Mr. Maroon got to be proud of that. Time for another Batmobile. The Batmobile leaps all the way down the track, skittering along many of the cars on the track. Actually, almost writes Tankinator, and then makes a spectacular recovery. That was a great jump by the Batmobile. Next up, it's going to be Creeper for Mind Control. Creeper explodes into the air, and look at this jump. Spirals over and over, and can't quite land it. Flips around and goes upside down, down at the end of the track. Oh, that's a bummer for mind control. Now up is the MBX Motorhome. MBX Motorhome never eliminated in the qualifier. The Motorhome goes flying off the back of Creature, and that is a great jump. Oh, he probably hit seven, and uh, does not land it at all, and so much for his perfect perfect record. He is upside down there, down at the end of the crates. I don't think he's recovering from that. Pink Caddy is up now for the Jalopies. 
Pink Caddy, a notorious spoiler for Creature from the Black Lagoon, and does it again. Manages to get underneath, but will it be enough to get the creature out of there? He is so solid. Here comes Fire Engine. Ooh, Fire Engine knocks the Caddy right off of Creature sideways. One of the few cars that can stop Creature, and it's not going to be able to right now. 2016 Ford GT Race is up next. Going to try to get under the back. Look at that. I think that GT Race could actually do that. Amazing recovery by the Fire Engine engine right there actually nice little twist and manages to land it and now graveyard smash is gonna send down the brand new dracula dracula kicks that gt race in the back and gt race is not going anywhere can't really get under creature but kind of nullifies the jump for the moment desert racer now for speed reasons Desert Racer manhandles Vampire with those big metal claws. Pushes him sideways. He's still on the track, though, so there could be some action there. Silver Dragon now, always unpredictable for the posse. Whoa, that was so fast. I don't even know what happened. Silver Dragon just speeds by, knocks the Desert Racer off the track. Vampire stays there, and Silver Dragon does a nice skidding recovery. Smooth. That's what I call that hit by Silver Dragon. A great skidding recovery there. Bizarre up next one of those cars that has a perfect record never eliminated in the qualifiers and bizarro takes a shot at vampire and actually writes him meanwhile gt race is now getting pushed off the track so creature could be back in effect at any moment batmobiles up for batmobility the batmobile flies through all the cars and pushes bizarro up on the very edge of creature and yep creature is very much in effect again this next hit could be a doozy it's zombie for mind control 40 grams zombie does indeed push both those cars off and over upside down bizarro no more perfect record that was a devastating hit from zombie but now zombies in the same position that they just were and it doesn't want to know what's behind it right now the biggest vehicle in junkyard jazz 203 grams here it comes condor 2 just annihilates zombie goodbye zombie goes flying off into the air who knows where and unfortunately not a super stable vehicle that condor flips over on top of all the other cars vampire now sideways and the condor 2 completely upside down not a great showing a great hit zombie upside down there towards the front of the crates but condor probably out of this match woody surf wagon now for the jalopies the surf wagon goes surfing on air all the way up to the front a nice diving smash and then manages to flip over right side up almost goes upside down it manages to recover great jump for the woody next up for five alarm it's snorkel fire engine this thing's got a low front bumper but i don't think it's low enough to avoid the creature Ooh, indeed it's not but a great recovery there he just kind of flips off the back rolls over and lands it kind of like the woody surf wagon that was actually a pretty good run for that vehicle monta racer now for the sun runners Monta Racer, an amazing jump and disappears out of sight down at the end of the track. Got flipped there and then it lands and drives over all the other cars into a ditch made of cars. And getting a close up here, yep, that is a survive right there, down by all those other cars that most of them didn't make it. Bride of Frankenstein now for the smash. Bride of Frankenstein, a solid hit into his own teammate and doesn't go off. Actually, uh, just puts himself off the track a little bit. That could be safe. Snake Oiler. Ooh, a big hit there from Snake Oiler and Bride of Frankenstein is just tossed off the track, rolls upside down. Big elimination there for the smash. Good hit from the Speed Reapers. Purple Knight Dragon dragged Snake Oiler along with him down the track and they both managed to land upright. That was a great recovery there. No damage inflicted. Chevrolet Delara IndyCar now for Maroon. The Indy car takes a nice flying leap into nothing. Upside down off the top of the Woody, and that was an unfortunate, most likely a loss for Maroon. Another Batmobile takes the plunge, and this time it goes amazingly well. A tap there, and a tap here, and the car catapults into a great recovery. That was a good run. Next up for Mind Control, it's Skeleton, never eliminated. 
Skeleton goes flying down to the end. I cannot see what happened to Skeleton down there. Oh, that doesn't look good. That looks very upside down. Confirmation, and yep, Skeleton is probably out of this match. That is another perfect record straight down the drain. First run. Rough for mind control. Winnebago Warpath is gonna send down the Chieftain. Will the Chieftain suffer the same fate as that Condor? Mm, probably. And it does just on the other side of the track, goes right off Creature and flops over sideways. Very disappointing. Actually hits the back of Winnebago. Might have actually survived, if not for Winnebago sort of being there to push it off the track. Jalopy is ascending down the Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Cadillac Coupe de Ville, a spectacular jump, but unfortunately could not nail the landing. Skitters off the side of Christine, actually, one of their own teammates, goes upside down, down at the end. Disappointing for the Jalopies. Here comes the Taskmaster for five alone. The Taskmaster takes that jump and does a little bit better of a job. Is close to sideways, but I think that's right side up down there. That looks potentially promising. Now flash drive for the Sunrunners. Flash drive rams into the back of Creature and actually almost stops and then kind of slides up on top and then slides back. That bumper just about low enough to actually stop him from going off the back. But now Graveyard Smash is going to send down the Wolfman. The final car of this round, he sends flash drive flying off into what could have been Oblivion. But Flash Drive actually makes a nice recovery. Wolfman with that low bumper does not go off the back of Creature. Nice little arrangement they have there. And since that was the final car of this round, we are going to take a look at the results. It was a little bit of carnage. 20 cars out of the 50 eliminated, and Mind Control took a big chunk of that. All their cars except Spider eliminated. Parthenax and the Reapers did not lose a single vehicle. They are going into the next round looking good. Winnebago and Joustin lost three apiece, and guess who else lost three? Favored to win this match? Graveyard Smash lost three of their cars. Five Alarm and Sunrunner's not looking too bad right now. It's round one, so each surviving car gets one point. That's five for the Posse and five for the Reapers, putting them at the top of the pack. Points, of course, do not decide the winner of a match unless in the final round there are less than three teams remaining. Four perfect records became imperfect in this round. The running order is up randomly determined based on how many cars you have left in the match. Parthenax is up first with PKD. Parthenax's posse making a great show here with five survivals in the first round. Doesn't guarantee anything, but it sure is better than having less than five. Your chances are going to be greatly improved. Snake Oiler taking its place on the track and pushing PKD up a little bit. Old number five, the only car that came along with the original five alarm team smashes into the two cars up ahead of him and pushes them off the track and takes that property for himself. Sunrunner's got to be pleased Ozenberg survived the first round. They're going to give this ramp a try again. Didn't work out the first time, but it's looking a little bit better now. Good time to send him down into the square back of old number five, and he is in a great position. Batmobile are going to test it out right now. Batmobile go flying right off the back of Ozenberg, but an amazing twisting recovery. Hits the crates, but still recovers. We've seen so many cars do that same thing and not make the recovery. Great job there by that Batmobile. The Dodge is going to take it now, and the Dodge not quite as much luck. Doesn't make much of a jump, but then goes off the track just enough to flip sideways, loses his balance, and a little bit top heavy there, doesn't work out too well. And now Wolfman is gonna try what he usually does to his own teammate, Creature. Gonna try to push that Ozenberg out of there. Oh, he does, he really does, but he almost went off the back of it too. The bumper didn't really push the Ozenberg, it was more the weight of the Wolfman, and now both of those cars are in a really bad position. Wolfman, we've never seen him in this position before. This is uh, this is gonna be tough for Graveyard Smash. They had a bad first round. Woody Surfwagon, the Jalopy, is gonna take full advantage of what's going on on the track down there and gonna try to smash Wolfman. Indeed they do. The Woody Surf Wagon has eliminated Wolfman from this match. That's a heavy vehicle and there's almost no likelihood it's going to get pushed back upright again. Wolfman probably down for the count for Graveyard Smash. They've got to be wondering what happened, what went wrong for them in this match. Tank 
Resonators plows into the back of Woody's surf wagon. Graveyard Smash probably worried that Creature was gonna go off the back of that Ozenberg, so they sent down Wolfman and it just did not go how they thought it would. That is just a devastating blow for Graveyard Smash as Spider, the last of the mind control, takes his place behind the tank. As it stands, there's two teams with one car left right now and it's Mind Control and Graveyard Smash. Blue Knight Dragon now. BKD goes up on the back of Spider, sets himself down real gently on the back of him, and that's not necessarily a bad position for him to be in, but we will see when Desert Racer gets his claws on him. Desert Racer goes over the back of BKD. Actually, the back bumper of BKD was low enough that now he went up on the top of him. That could be a dangerous position to be in. Here comes Fire Engine. A wallop of a hit from Fire Engine there and pushes Desert Racer off the side of the track. And now he's got his ladder extended. That could prevent him from getting tipped over. Monta Racer now. Monta Racer, ooh, pops BKD off the track upside down. And that could be the first elimination for Parthenax's posse. Just depends on whether he can get back upright again. Batmobile barrels into the back of Monta Racer. Monta Racer gets off the track and makes a pretty nice escape right there. And there's a nice solid line of cars. Let's see if Winnebago can shake things up a little bit. Winnebago heaves itself into the back of that Batmobile and the fire engine is forced up into the air and uses his ladder to great effect actually, manages to stabilize and not totally fall off, but not right side up right there either. So it remains to be seen whether or not that ladder is going to pay off. And it looks like we're going to get the Winnebago Creature from the Black Lagoon combo again because Creature's going down for Graveyard Smash now, going to try to set up that jump, their last hope. Creature slams into the back and takes its position. Creature was pretty devastating in that first round and it could very well happen again. Christine's gonna be the first one to take the plunge for the jalopies. Christine launches into the air, takes a nice balance jump and lands on the back of Spider, smashes Spider off the track. Fire engine still upside down. Spider definitely in danger right there and Christine looking good, landed that jump. Good run there for that jalopy. Time for the quad rod now to see if he can make that jump like he did last time. Quad rod, whoa! Was definitely expecting a jump right there, but instead quad rod actually stops the jump, hits the back of creature and does not go off. That's not something I knew was possible. Let's see what happens now when the Mustang slams into the back. Quad rod gets catapulted into the air and lands upside down, probably thinking, oh, I should have taken that jump after all. This did not work out, but it did work out for the Mustang. Slides off to the side, looking pretty good. GRX now, GRX likes to make these jumps, I think. GRX just kind of goes off the edge, actually grabs the Mustang and pushes him down the line, and the fire engine actually does make a recovery. So that arm did pay off. Speaking of fire engines, here comes the snorkel. Snorkel made a good jump last time, but it doesn't go well this time. Biffs into the back of the tank and takes a bad roll, ends up upside down over by the tires. So one fire engine recovered, but the other one is not looking so good. Sunrunner's got the GT race. We know that this thing has a low enough bumper to survive and it does it again. Pushes everybody forward on the track and doesn't go off the back of Creature. Batmobile starting to get pushed up now. Speaking of Batmobile, here's Batmobile. Classic Batmobile sends GT Race flying off the back of Creature. Doesn't manage to stop himself from going off that time. And GT Race makes a pretty nice recovery down there. And the Batmobile now is in position to be flung. And it looks like it's gonna be Purple Dragon who's gonna do the bashing on this run. Purple Dragon smacks the Batmobile off the track and then does a crazy little twist flips right side up. That is just an amazing feat of athleticism right there by the Purple Dragon. Great job and a great run for him. Musha Motor is now for Speed Reapers. Musha takes a flying leap over all the other cars all the way down to the end. Hits almost a seven in height and then lands it. Parks it perfectly down at the end. Great jump right there. Taskmaster. Taskmaster cannot manage the same kind of grace that Musha Motors did. 
and flips over sideways down at the end of the track right next to his teammate. That is gonna be two fire engines down right now. Next up is Flash Drive. Flash Drive this time decides to go off the back of Creature and makes a pretty good jump. Goes a little bit sideways there. Looks like it could go badly, but then manages to turn it around and land it right side up down at the end. Nice run there by Flash Drive. We've got two cars left in this round. Silver Dragon for Parthenaxis Posse is going down next. Can the Silver Dragon manage to do what the Purple Dragon did? And Silver Dragon takes a nice big leap. Look at the grace. Look at the style lands it on his tail and then turns back over again, refuses to go upside down. That was a great one right there. Let's see if Grey Ghost can pull off something of the same. Grey Ghost stops dead on the back of Creature and doesn't go off. I didn't realize that the bumper was that low on that Grey Ghost. So a lucky hit for him and taking a look at the aftermath, Speed Reapers are coming out of this with no losses. Mind control, unfortunately, Spider flipped over and they are done. Mr. Maroon down to one, Posse loses their first. Winnebago Warpath just down to the Winnebago and Graveyard Smash just down to Creature. Five Alarm and the Sunrunners both lost two. And right now the story of this match is the Speed Reapers and Parthenax's Posse. So far dominating in this match, but it's only been two rounds, and I will tell you there are a bunch more rounds, so it's still anybody's game as we head into the remainder of Main Event Heat 3 with nine teams left. Join me next time as we find out who's going to make it into the finals. Thanks for watching, everybody, and thanks, patrons, for your support. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Twenty-one cars and nine teams remaining. We go until there's only three teams left. Welcome back to the second half of round three of the main event. I'm Aaron Yanda. We're about to find out who's going to make it to the finals. We know it's not mind control. They are already out of this match. Mr. Maroon is only one away. Speed Reapers have not lost a single vehicle. Parthenax's posse is doing pretty good, and Bat Mobility is definitely still in this. Despite the impressive size of their vehicles, Winnebago's Warpath ends tonight with just Winnebago, the only one left on that team. Jalopy's Five Alarm and the Runners all have two, and Graveyard Smash are our third place champs from last season. Still got one left, and of course, it's Creature from the Black Lagoon. The randomly determined running order is up. We're gonna start off with the Speed Reapers. The Speed Reapers had a great showing in the first two rounds. They weren't even bothered by Creature from the Black Lagoon with their agility that their cars have. Some of them with these special implements, they've really been able to excel. A little bit of a surprise how well Parthenax's posse has done in this match. Some of their cars can be kind of unpredictable, but they are doing great for themselves at the moment as Purple Knight Dragon smacks into Speed Racer. And now up, it's a Batmobile for Bat Mobility. Batmobiles have been doing all right in this match too as the Batmobile pushes the Desert Racer up on top of Evil Weevil. Could be a little precarious right there. Five Alarm, another little bit of a surprise. Old number five though, always consistent, always good. Old number five smacks into the Batmobile and just about clears the track off completely. Doesn't take anybody out at the moment, but uh, there are some precarious positions. Woody Surfwagon had a great second round, actually took out Wolfman for the Graveyard Smash team. Got to be pretty proud of that and does a massive hit right in the back of old number five. All the implements are sheared off of Desert Racer, and Desert Racer, ooh, that was close, barely recovers from that. Nobody on the ropes right now. Nobody close to being eliminated. Monta Racer smacks into the back of the Woody and takes his place on the track. Monta Racer, an agile car, has had a lot of success recovering from big hits and jumps in this match. Graveyard Smash is gonna send down Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's time to set up that jump. Creature, a nice slam into Monteracer, actually pushes Monteracer up, but Monteracer doesn't want to leave the track for some reason. And now he's sitting prone on the track. He's going to take a big hit right now from the Tanknator. This is Mr. Maroon's last hope right here. Tanknator boots Monteracer off the track, drives along the cars, and then falls over sideways, slumping sadly onto its side, and that is going to end Mr. Maroon's hopes probably for this match. Now Winnebago's got their last hope. 
Winnebago does the same thing. Drives all the way down on top of the cars. Bounces and bounces. Man, does some damage to old number five there. And then flips over. And that thing's not going to recover. Old number five now is actually threatened by this position. So Winnebago did a little bit of damage on his way out. Pretty upset about the results of this match, I suspect. That's going to end Winnebago Warpath's chance of getting in the finals right there. The GRX for Speed Reapers has been using those claws to its advantage. Here we go again. Wow, the GRX flies off the back of Creature and just plows into the crates and uses those claws to bounce backwards in a great bouncing recovery for GRX. This car just thrives off these jumps, does not even get bothered by them. Another vehicle that loves these jumps, it's Silver Dragon. Silver Dragon, a beautiful leap right there, up to the front, lands up right past the safety bar and then takes its place almost in the track. That's a pretty good position to be in as long as you can stick it and uh, not get clobbered by another car when it comes off the jump. Here comes the Batmobile for Batmobility. Batmobile takes a really nice jump, a lot of flipping, but hits the crates and a bad bounce. Nowhere to go. The tank is blocking it. No recovery there for that car, and that is a good car. That's a tough loss for Batmobility. Fire engine. Fire engine just flops off the back of Creature, lands, and skitters to a halt up by the front of the crates. A little bit of stabilization going on with that ladder, I think. I think that's really working out for that fire engine. The jalopies have been having a lot of success with Christine. Christine takes that jump like a boss, jumps over everybody, looks like it could be trouble, but then collides with fire engine and settles back out. Good jump there for Christine. That's going to keep the jalopies in this match. They still have another car, though, of course, with the Woody. Up now for the Sunrunners, Flash Drive. Flash Drive goes right off the back of Creature. We saw Flash Drive actually stop and not go off Creature once, but not this time. And it's unfortunate because now Flash Drive hits the crates and is upside down, probably out of this match. That's becoming a graveyard down there at the end of the track. Gray Ghost now is going to take his shot. A swing and a miss for Grey Ghost. Jumps off and flips right upside down. This is possibly the first elimination for the Speed Reapers. Grey Ghost took a tough bounce off the crates, just like that Batmobile did. And they are piling up down there. Purple Dragon's going to have a tough time, even with agility, trying to land perfectly in this situation. And it doesn't work at all. Purple Dragon floats nicely through the air, but then hits that pile down there and cannot get out. Out of it just gets stuck it's a big cluster down there and cars are starting to get stuck in it it's like the La Brea tar pits except for our competitors today Batmobile now the classic Batmobile Ooh, the same thing now for the Batmobile flips over lands on purple dragon and there's nowhere to go no chance of recovering that because you're just stuck there it's almost like they're covered with glue and it's it's yeah the tar pit like I said much of motors now for speed reapers Musha Motors does a great job of recovering, does not get stuck in the tar pit, bounces off and just drives all the way back and gets out of that mess. That is why the Speed Reapers are doing so well right there. It's those kind of athletics that you're going to see from this team, and that is the sign of a champion team right there. The Mustang for Posse. Mustang does a pretty good job of getting out of the morass down there, hits the crates, and goes back just far enough to have a little recovery. Good jump there by the Mustang. Snake Oiler's going to take his shot now for the Speed Reapers. Snake Oiler, a nice even jump and just keeps it level, hits the crates but doesn't flip over and that is going to make all the difference. Final car of this round, great recovery, didn't even have to recover actually, just kept it nice and even keeled. And there's the car that is single-handedly responsible for all this devastation that you see before you right now. Man, what a pile of wrecks creature devastating this round and that is going to leave us with 14 cars left mr maroon is out of this match bat mobility down to one now and posse and speed reapers both lost one warpath is out jalopies and five alarm did good they didn't lose any cars that time and sunrunners are down to one graveyard smash still in this and still devastating points wise the speed reapers got it with 27 with parthenax back at 22 five alarm in third with 14. With the elimination of that Batmobile, we are down to six cars now with the perfect record. 
having never been eliminated in the qualifiers. Looking at the running order, I think the most important thing to look at here is Graveyard Smash is going sixth, which means that the cars going before it are going to have a chance to live. Most of the teams that went after Graveyard Smash last round did not fare well. Speed Reapers are going to send down Snake Oiler to start off round four. Here we go. Ooh, Snake Oiler goes curbside with the whole left side of his car. That's actually not a great position to be in right there, although it could make a nice nifty escape if he gets hit the right way. Purple Knight Dragon's gonna be doing the smash in here, and wow, what a hit! Purple Knight Dragon sends Snake Oiler right off the track, up in the air, but what a recovery! That was a nifty escape by Snake Oiler right there. Speed Reapers just can't be messed with. Old number five. Old number five just clobbers Purple Knight Dragon, sends him flying over Evil Weevil into the crates and upside down. That was a great hit from old number five. Solid car, that. Christine now for the jalopy. Christine smacks the back of old number five, but old number five's not going anywhere. Just gonna go up and sit at the front, nice and locked in on the track. The final Batmobile for Batmobility. Nice hit on Christine and locks it into the track pretty nicely. And now all those cars that are locked into the track so nicely, it's a good time for the creature from the Black Lagoon to go down and set up that jump. Here he goes. Creature slots in and the jump is prepared. Everybody coming after this is going to have to have some serious agility. Monta Racer, speaking of agility. Monta Racer takes a massive leap off the back of Creature. Goes all the way up to oh, about six and a half, I'd say. Bounces off the crates, bounces off the track flips looks like it's gonna be upside down but then flips right side up at the last second amazing recovery there by monta racer and it keeps the sunrunners in this match grx going down next for the reapers grx loves this jump there he goes again, goes right up to the front, plants the claws, and just flips up a little bit, but comes right down. Just perfect. Not even a chance of going upside down. The balance on that car and the claws, it's just a great combo, and you can see why that car is still around. Silver Dragon now, unpredictable. We don't know what's gonna happen here, but we know it's gonna be fun. Silver Dragon pops up just like last round and lands it up front, goes over the claws, and it's a pretty stable landing, pretty good spot to be in. Great jump there by Silver Dragon. Pushes GRX off the track. Fire Engine's up now, let's see if that ladder can help him out. Fire Engine flies all the way over to Silver Dragon and then flips upside down. I don't think the ladder helped right there and actually now puts Silver Dragon in danger of being sideways and remains upside down in a really weird position. I think just resting on those claws might be able to recover from that, but not a good jump there by the fire engine. Woody Surfwagon's got to make this jump now. Woody Surfwagon cannot plant it. Jumps, hits the fire engine who manages to not recover and then flops over upside down. Does not have enough power to get back on his feet. And yep, the cars are starting to pile up down there again. Creature doing that damage. Musha Motors. A swing and a hit. Look at that recovery. Just goes straight into the crates. Bounces back, lands on his wheels, goes over and hits the tires. Right over by Monta Racer. Not even phased by that jump at all. Again, we're kind of in a situation here where Creature cannot even do anything to some of these cars. They just don't mind these jumps and they just recover. Speaking of recovering, look at that recovery right there by the Mustang. That was a great jump and a slam, multiple flips. And then look at this. Oof, it was close, but that windshield actually propelled him over and the Mustang survives to crash another day. And it's a good thing too, because if you take a look, Purple Knight Dragon and Silver Dragon are both out right now. Mustang hadn't done that. Posse would be out of here. Desert Racer, a great jump right there. Loses an implement on the way down. I, I think lost the front implement too, but it worked. It cushioned the blow and uh, he settles in over by Purple Knight Dragon. Almost gave Purple Knight Dragon a recovery, but not quite. That's gonna be the last car of this round. Surveying the devastation that creature hath wrought. Let's take a look at the aftermath. The Speed Reapers again did not lose a single car. They have four cars left as we head into round five 
Every other remaining team just has one car left. I don't think we've ever seen a more lopsided match than what we're seeing right now with Speed Reapers just dominating the competition. 43 points for them, the Posse at 26, and 5 Alarm in third. It's still anybody's match, although I have to say, up to this point, it has mostly been the Speed Reapers match. Perfect records continue to disappear. Purple Knight Dragon and Woody Wagon are out, so only four cars left with a perfect record. Speed Reapers have four cars, so they'll be going first, and randomly, it has been decided Graveyard Smash is going second. And it looks like they're sending Desert Racer down for the Speed Reapers, and Desert Racer now, interesting thing, that implement on the back, could that be trouble for Creature, or is that front bumper low enough that he's not really gonna have any problems with it? Creature slams into the back of Desert Racer, and look at this! Driving off the back of that implement, and Creature is in deep danger right now. Monta Racer has a chance right here to eliminate the Creature. A big tap to the back of the Creature, and Creature gets a near miss right there. Monta Racer couldn't finish him, and that was close. You don't see Creature in that position too often. That could have been it for a championship team. Old number five now for five alone. Old number five. Five just mauls Monta Racer, but Monta Racer recovers, but Desert Racer gets tossed right over the safety rail and goes sideways. Almost makes a recovery, but can't quite manage it. And finally, a second car for the Speed Reapers might actually get eliminated here. If any cars get eliminated that aren't on the Speed Reapers team, those teams are out of this match. Christine now for the Jalopies. Ooh, a heavy hit on the back of old number five sends him off the track and sideways. That's it for old number five, and that is it for five alarm. They are probably gone here. Good hit from Christine there. Batmobile. Batmobile cannot move Christine. Nasty hit, and now Batmobile is curbside. You do not want to be in that position right now. Here comes the Mustang for the posse. Mustang just annihilates the Batmobile, spinning in the air four or five times, and yeah, not recovering from that. Upside down, Christine starting to go off the track, but still safe for the moment. Musha. Musha collides with the back of Mustang, pushes Batmobile over a little bit more. Not enough to right it, though. Two teams are in big trouble right here, and we've got Snake Oiler for the Speed Reapers. A big slam on his own teammate, but of course, Musha just recovers, no problem. And because the only car left is another Speed Reapers team, they're gonna have to hit their own car again. It's gonna be the GRX this time with the claws. GRX sends his own teammate flying off and the Mustang flying off, but they recover. So it looks like we're just gonna lose those two teams this time. And it looks like we're gonna be heading into round six. And look at this desert racer somehow managed to recover from being sideways up in the front. That is gonna leave Speed Reapers with four cars going into round six. Parthenax's posse still in this, as well as the Jalopies, Sunrunners, and Graveyard Smash, all with one car still hanging on. As long as you've got one car left, when we get down to only three teams, you're in the finals. Speed Reapers now at 63 points, followed by the posse at 31, and the Jalopies at 21, just above the Sunrunners. Looking at the running order, Graveyard Smash going fourth this time, and the Speed Reapers, of course, will be starting us off with one of their four cars, Desert Racer, with that crazy recovery from last round. Desert Racer loses the hooks off the front of his car and goes curbside. That's gonna cause some problems for the next car to come down, I think. And it's gonna be the fast-moving Mustang GT for the posse. The Mustang blows Desert Racer up into the air, implements flying all over the place. Desert Racer is tossed right off the track and goes sideways. We've seen him recover from that before, so it might not be the end. And the GT Racer just gets those implements out of the area. Monta Racer now for the runners. Monta Racer, a solid hit on the back of the Mustang. And the Mustang pops back and his curbside does not go off the track. Right now there's five teams left. If two of them get eliminated, this match is over. I'd be really surprised if the Reapers are one of those teams to get eliminated, but you just never know in Junkyard Joust. Now up for the smash, it's the creature. Creature smashes into Monta Racer and the Mustang. The Monta Racer recovers, but the Mustang wobbles and it goes upside down. Parthenax's posse, they had four cars going into this. It's unbelievable. That might be it for them. 
Christine collides at full speed with those crates and bounces back straight, slides off the back of Creature, and is now blocking Creature sideways on the track. That's not a good position to be in right there. The next car to come down is just gonna knock Christine flying, and Christine's gotta make a recovery in order to stay in this match. GRX with the claws, Speed Reaper's going in for the kill. The GRX claws Christine off the track. A really nasty hit. Christine is hurled upside down on top of the Mustang. And if it stays like this, those are the two teams that are out of this match because we've got three left. But there's still two cars to come down. The Speed Reapers have two cars remaining. Snake Oiler makes a good hit on GRX. GRX is safe. Desert Racers upside down and probably out, but I don't think the Speed Reapers are in any danger of being eliminated here. And even if they were, they have enough points to win in a match where there's less than three teams remaining and it's a match decided on points. And it doesn't look like this one's gonna be that. Musha sends Snake Oiler flying. What a recovery by Snake Oiler. Just amazing agility from the Speed Reapers team. They've shown it time and time again. An underrated team. Nobody thought they were gonna get this far, but they have have dominated this match. Three cars left and this match is over. But there's something interesting that you're gonna wanna stay tuned for here in a second after we get through the aftermath. The Speed Reapers, of course, the story of this match. So many records broken by them, staying alive, amazing agility. Graveyard Smash and the Sun Runners are also moving on. There are three intact perfect records after this match. Snake Oiler, GRX, and Monta Racer could not get eliminated. Speed Reapers have got to be happy to have two cars that have never been eliminated going into the finals. Speed Reapers obviously on top with 81 points, the Sun Runners 26, and Graveyard Smash 22. Now you'll notice that the fourth place, Parthenax's Posse, has 31 points. The Shredheads in their match scored 31 points and got fourth place. The way the Junkyard Joust works, the fourth place team at the end of the main event that has the most points gets the wild card position and makes it into the finals. Right now we've got two teams who are tied at 31. They can't both be in the finals, so I am going to leave it up to the Junkyard Joust patrons to decide which of these two teams they want to see in the finals. Patrons, you can use any criteria you want to decide which of these teams you want to see in the finals. It's totally up to you. You're the ones who make this show possible, so I'm going to give you the choice. Taking a look at the fan pick favorites, Graveyard Smash, of course. Yep, that was a good choice. And kudos to those of you who chose the Sun Runners and the Speed Reapers. To the person who got the closest, I'll be emailing you shortly about your prize. These three teams are definitely going to the finals. Creature from the Black Lagoon is going to get the MVP of this round with 21 kills, just two less than Oozcoop got. But all the cars you see here pretty much deserve it. They were amazing. We're heading into the finals and look at the teams that are going to be facing off in that match. We've never seen a matchup like this before in Junkyard Joust. It is going to be legendary. Go to patreon.com slash junkyard joust if you'd like to help make the decision about the posse or the shredheads. There's a host of other things you can do too, like become a car sponsor or a team sponsor. This has been Aaron Yanda. Thanks for watching and we will see you at the finals. In Season 1 of Junkyard Joust, everybody was worried about Creature from the Black Lagoon, but after a fluke hit from Ferrari F40, LaMelt jumped on it, and Creature was out. With the help of Wolfman, Graveyard Smash still got third place, and it came down to the Silver Slivers versus LaMelt from the Emerald Undercurrent. It was four against one. There's no way LaMelt should have taken it, and yet LaMelt took home the victory in one of the most stunning up sets of all time. Now all three of those teams are back plus seven more who have fought tooth and nail up through the qualifiers and the main event to get to this point, the Junkyard Joust Finals. There's 10 teams and 50 cars and we go until only one team remains. It's the Junkyard Joust and it's a competition unlike anything you've ever seen before. Hi everybody, this is Aaron Yanda and thanks for joining me tonight. This is very much a team sport and here are your teams for tonight. These are our season two finalists. Let's head into the garage and take a closer look. Last year's champions, the Emerald Undercurrent, are back and ready to defend their title. They've got one new addition. It's an undercutter called Tire Fryer, Eye Candy, 
Salt Shaker, Berserk, and of course, Lamelt. Graveyard Smash are truly the monsters of this event with their newcomer Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, Creature from the Black Lagoon, The Wolfman, and The Mummy. Speed Reapers surprised everyone by dominating in their main event. They had three cars left at the end of it, and they are ready for more action now with the desert version of Speed Racer, Desert Racer, Grey Ghost, Musha Motors, Snake Oiler, and GRX. Parthenax's posse wasn't sure if they were going to make it into the finals, but with the help of the Junkyard Just patrons, they are here. And they're ready and roaring to fight. With the 96 Mustang GT, Purple Dragon, Silver Dragon, Blue Knight Dragon, and Purple Knight Dragon. The Sunrunners are a well-rounded team with a lot of offensive and defensive capability. That flexibility has gotten them to this point. With Chevrolet, Ozenberg, Flash Drive, the 2016 Ford GT Race, and Monta Racer. They see me rolling's the most glamorous team playing today, but don't be fooled by their looks. They've got some serious survivability. With the 53 Cadillac, all glitzed up. One of this season's MVPs, Rev Rod, the 77 Dodge Van, Papa Wheelie, and Rising Heat. Junkyard Domestic Market's got a vehicle with a shark in the back, and that's not even their secret weapon. With Skyline GTR, the 86, Honda NSX Type R, Aquarium Truck, and the Sakura Sprinter with Secret Weapon. The Silver Slivers thought they had it in the bag last season until Lamelt pulled the rug out from under them. This year they are back and they want revenge. Their one new car is Riley and Scott Mark III, Silhouette 2, Silver Bullet, Tomb Up, and Stinger. The industrial accidents are good at doing just that, causing accidents on the track, especially with the Helicopter Transport, Tractor Digger, Street Cleaner, the Recycler, and the NASA Anteater. They're quick, they're agile, and you don't want to get in their way. It's Jet Streak with Jet Threat 4, Formula E Gen 2, Snow Patrol, the FL Racer, and Jet Threat 3. The rules for Junkyard Joust are simple, survive. Each team takes turns sending a car down the track. The teams get to choose which car they send down, and that's where the strategy comes in. If you're sideways or upside down at the end of the round, you're out. Each team gets points for each car that they have left at the end of a round. Let's take a look at who you guys think is going to win this match. Graveyard Smash, 30.8%. That's over 10% higher than Emerald Undercurrent and Speed Reapers. And it doesn't look like most of you have much faith in Silver Slivers, 3.8%. Well, let's find out what's going to happen. The running order is up. The teams got to choose based on how many points they scored in the main event. For the rest of the match, the running order will be determined based on how many cars you have left and randomness. This is it. The finals begin now with the Desert Racer. Desert Racer going to take its place on the field. Got those implements. Those can sometimes be a problem for vehicles, but Emerald Undercurrent are not afraid. Sending down the melt immediately, sensing perhaps an opportunity here to cause trouble right at the start of this match with that low back. They drive up on the back of Desert Racer. Formula E Gen 2. Formula E Gen 2 is going to be the first casualty of this match. He hits the back of Lamelt and goes flying into the crates. Lands upside down and there's not much of a chance of recovery after that. Emerald Undercurrent starting out this match aggressively. They weren't even worried about Lamelt getting tangled up in the back of those implements. Now JDM's going to send down the Honda. The Honda plows into the back of Lamel and doesn't go off of it like a jump, just kind of pushes ahead, so low enough bumper to prevent Lamel from being a threat right there. Silhouette 2 now for Silver Slivers. Silhouette 2 just snipes the Honda off the track, upside down, and can't quite make it over, and that could be it for him. Fantastic takedown by Silhouette. The Silver Slivers also starting out aggressively. Graveyard Smash is going to send their first down on the track. It's the Mummy. Mummy launches off the back of Lamelt and flips over an unlikely recovery, but somehow Mummy pulls it off. Heavy car, but surprisingly agile. Parthenax's posse going to send down the Purple Dragon. This is an unpredictable vehicle. Purple Dragon smashes into the crates and just a huge hit and then somehow manages to just get far enough down off the Mummy to recover with face in the ground. But that is right side up, so he's going to be all right. 
tractor digger now for the industrial accidents. This is a vehicle that they've used on their own team to take out the ramp on helicopter transport, and now they're going to try to do the same thing with the back of the melt. Will it pay off? We'll see. Once the 77 Dodge van collides with the back of it, and a big hit there, but it's not going anywhere. Tractor digger is under the melt and has neutralized the melt, but not going to be able to get him off the track, it looks like. And now Sunrunners are going to take advantage of this. The Ozenberg goes underneath the van and is now basically set up with a ramp situation. The Ozenberg not quite as stable as Creature from the Black Lagoon, but still a threat. Now for the Speed Reapers, it's GRX. This is one of the five cars going into this event that has never been eliminated in any match. Speed Reapers have two of those cars. That's got to give them some confidence. Ooh, wow, a big jump there from the GRX. Taps the back of that van going up and off, lands it. Van doesn't quite tip over. That was a close one. Tire fryer now for the undercurrent. Tire fryer leaps off the back of Ozenberg and does not go under. A poor showing there by Tire Fryer, who is now upside down. But, you know, everybody's got a little nerves going into this event, especially if they haven't done it before. Jet Threat 3. Jet Threat 3. Oof. A nice recovery there. Almost upside down, but then flips over. No idea how that car manages it, but it's a beauty to behold. The Skyline GTR for JDM. The Skyline smashes into the back of the Ozenberg and flips up. Almost displaces the Ozenberg, but can't quite manage it. Then face plants on top of Silhouette and lands upside down. That is probably going to be it for that car. But what a way to go. Time for some Tomb Up action. Tomb Up goes flying off the back of Ozenberg and unsurprisingly lands it. This car is known for some impressive recoveries. And he does it again. Now it's time for the Wolfman with that low front bumper. They're going to try to get rid of Ozenberg here, I think. And Wolfman goes off the back of Ozenberg. It did not work. Normally that van is really good at staying on the track and preventing those ramp vehicles from being effective, but not this time. Triple Knight Dragon is going to finish the Wolfman off. A devastating miscalculation there for Graveyard Smash. And Tractor Digger is in danger. And look at this. Purple Dragon pushed sideways by his own teammate. A lot going on here. The Recycler up now. The Recycler, a big hit in the back of Purple Knight Dragon, but doesn't really do much to him. But look at all the upside down and sideways cars. This is really starting to heat up. Papa Wheelie. Papa Wheelie pops off the back of the Recycler, completely splits the vehicle in two, and one half goes on one side and one on the other. Luckily for them, the side that matters, the side that needs to remain upright, is upright on the uh, left side of the track there, and then the back of his truck is completely blown off upside down on the other side. That was a big hit from Papa Wheelie, a car that we haven't seen that much from in previous matches. Chevrolet now. The Chevrolet later gives it to the back of Papa Wheelie, but Papa Wheelie just rolls over and recovers. An amazing recovery there. Actually lands next to the recycler's other half, and they're both right side up. Gray Ghost now for the Reapers. Great Ghost assassinates Chevrolater, just flies right underneath him and puts him on his back, upside down. That was a good hit, and it slowed Gray Ghost down enough that he drove off the back of Ozenberg fairly safely. Salt Shaker shakes up Gray Ghost, puts him on the side of the track, but can't end him. And Salt Shaker slides off to the right of the track. Pretty good position. FL Racer now for Jet Streak. FL Racer cannot get under Ozenberg, goes up and over, and what a recovery, just slides back, smooth as can be, and now Tractor Digger is in a bad position. 8-6 for JDM. 8-6 has just taken down Ozenberg, flipped him upside down off the side of the track. Unfortunately, it didn't work out well for him either, and he's upside down off to the right, but now that ramp for Ozenberg is off the track. So JDM has neutralized the Ozenberg threat, but with the loss of their own car. Silver Bullet now. Silver Bullet punches Ozenberg off the track, and look at that! Ozenberg makes a complete recovery over by the FL Racer. It looked like that car was going to be out of it, but now he's recovered and safe. Probably not the result that they were hoping for on the Silver Slivers team. And now that there's a little bit of stability down there on the track, Graveyard Smash sensing an opportunity, and they're going to send down Creature from the Black Lagoon. 
Creature takes his place, a nice gentle slot into the track, and now that jump is ready for action. And now all eyes are on the creature. Silver Dragon gonna take the plunge first. Big jump, and somehow, unbelievably, Silver Dragon makes the recovery. Hits the crates, he's sideways, he's upside down, it looks like it's over, and then ever so slowly, bam, right back up on his feet. That was a great jump. That's what we've come to expect from Parthenax's posse. They do stuff like this all the time. Great job. Tumbles right over his own teammate and survives. NASA and Eater now for the industrial accidents. Huge jump straight into the crates. I don't know how that semi even survived that crash. Smashes in, pushes the crates back, and bounces straight back, almost covering Creature up. It'll be interesting to see how that comes into play with Creature partially covered up that could prevent him from being effective. Rising Heat now. Rising Heat punches the back of that semi, knocks it off the track completely, but somehow the Anteater recovers and Rising Heat's looking pretty safe off to the side there. GT race. Ooh, a nice hit there. And as usual, that GT race is not going off any ramp. That front is way too low, but let's see if he can capitalize on his position right now. Instead of a push, Snake Oiler glides underneath the GT race, and that is not going to affect Creature at all. Eye candy now for the undercurrent. Eye candy smacks the back of both cars and starts to slide them off. Creature's getting a little covered up here, so if nothing else, that could prevent him from being effective. Snow Patrol for the Jet Street. Snow Patrol gives a hefty bam to the back of Eye Candy, and Eye Candy flips around a couple of times and makes an impressive recovery up there in the front on top of his own teammate. Aquarium Truck now for JDM. Bam, a nice heavy hit from Aquarium Truck there. It sends Snow Patrol off to the side, maybe sideways. And GT Race looks like he's gonna survive this all right. And then Aquarium Truck slides back down the track. Shark's still intact. It looks like the Riley and Scott Mark III took a liking to Baby Cookie back when they fought in the semi-finals. Baby Cookie's crime syndicate, of course. The aquarium truck is sent head over shark onto the side of the road, and uh, I guess we should call it Cookie and Scott. Cookie and Scott Mark III settle back into the track. That was a good hit. Bride of Frankenstein is up now for the smash. Bride of Frankenstein go underneath Cookie and Scott Mark III, and ooh, just for a second, Creature from the Black Lagoon was getting moved up in the air by the front of that car, but managed to elude the grasp just barely. Blue Knight Dragon. A nice solid hit from Blue Knight Dragon there. Pushes Bride up and Cookie and Scott are off the track. There's Cookie buried under several cars. I'm not sure that this little team up worked out too well for them, but it was fun while it lasted. Speaking of ending fun, here comes Helicopter Transport. Now things are gonna get interesting. Helicopter transport slams into Blue Knight Dragon, pushes him up in the air, and also pushes Bride of Frankenstein all the way off Creature. Bride is now upside down. We've got a lot of carnage over there on the side, and now that ramp is in place. Of course, They See Me Rolling's gonna send down the Rev Rod. Rev Rod knows how to handle this. Rev Rod takes flight, actually clips a little bit on Blue Knight Dragon and then lands upright like Rev Rod does every time. One of those cars that has never been eliminated and continues to do exactly that. Monta Racer for the Sunrunners. Monta Racer goes all the way up to the crates. Another car that's experienced and pretty good at surviving these kind of things, Monta Racer. But unfortunately, the GT Racer is now upside down. So mixed results for the Sunrunners. Musha Motors. Musha Motors takes that jump and, oh man, Musha gets hung up on the Anteater and is currently uh, basically upside down right there. That could be a problem for the Speed Reapers. Buzzerk. Buzzerk takes a long arcing jump all the way up to the front and actually pushes Musha back upright again, saving him. And Buzzerk is looking good up there by Anteater. Good jump there. Jet Threat 4 is gonna be the next one to hit that ramp. 
Jet Threat 4 does a nice jump, sort of middle of the way up towards the front and lands it. Good jump, survived. That's all you gotta do. And now JDM has no choice but to send down the Sakura Sprinter. They've waited and waited and looked for a good opening to send down that secret weapon, but it never quite timed out. And the Sakura Sprinter hits the back of Helicopter Transport and flips over this is a vehicle that was never eliminated some said it couldn't even be done but helicopter transport has just ended it that vehicle is done and jdm is in deep trouble stinger now for the slivers stinger flips up the ramp a little bit but can't quite get underneath it and just hops onto the back of helicopter transport it's dracula now for the smash Dracula makes a nice leap over all the rest of the cars. A nice even jump, a little tip there, but he stays upright and that's what you gotta do. Goes right past the sprinter who's just lying there. Secret weapon never deployed. That is probably the single biggest elimination in this round so far. The Mustang GT's up for posse. Mustang does a nice jump, nice and smooth, lands right on the back of Ant Eater. Not exactly a smooth place to land, but somehow he manages to land it. The Mustang is definitely one of the Posse's most reliable cars, pretty stable compared to the rest of the team. And now Street Cleaner has to survive a brush with his own teammate, and he doesn't, not at all. Hits the back and goes right on his side. But Industrial's probably thinking as long as helicopter transport survives, we're fine. And now here comes the much bejeweled 53 Cadillac. The Cadillac goes into the bottom of Street Cleaner and flips over. Not much chance of recovery there. We are on to our last car of this round, Flash Drive. Flash Drive also slams into the bottom of Street Cleaner, but makes an amazing dismount off to the right. A little flip, a tap, and goes right over, and that is going to count as upright. Let's take a look at the damage wrought by our competitors this round. All told, 18 cars have been eliminated from the finals in this one round. And I've got bad news for any junkyard domestic market fans out there. They have been completely eliminated from the finals just in this first round. They relied heavily on the Sprinter this whole season and the Sprinter is done and so are they. Silver Slivers and Emerald Undercurrent each lost one, and Jet Streak lost two. Speed Reapers, not a single loss. Graveyard Smash lost two with the tough loss of Wolfman, one of their best vehicles. Parthenax's Posse lost only one. Industrial, Roland, and the Runners each lost two cars apiece. So a big chunk of the eliminations this round were JDM, who lost their entire team, and of course lost their perfect record, but there's still four perfect records left. And judging by what happened in round one, I have a feeling we are going to see some more perfect records go away in round two. This competition is only going to get more intense and fierce as the battle continues. Speed Reaper is going first and opting to start off again with the Desert Racer, hoping those implements cause some trouble for the next car to come down. He does a little jaunt there at the end, but lands it. Now it's the Mustang's turn. Mustang hits the back of Desert Racer, goes off the implements, and now is curbside, which could be bad, so we might see that little uh, implement action pay off here. Depends on what Silver Bullet does when he goes down. Silver Bullet annihilates the Mustang. He's flipped off the track and he can't quite make it back upright again. Now he's sideways. We'll see what happens to him as more cars come down the track. Undercurrent again is gonna send Lamelt down the track. They liked what happened last round. Lamelt plops into Silver Bullet nicely. Silver Bullet recovers. That's surprisingly civilized behavior for these two cars, but it actually leaves the melt slightly curbside. Undercutters can't be happy about that. And yep, Creature from the Black Lagoon's going down for the smash. They're gonna try to get that jump into place and take advantage of what's going on with the melt right now. Creature goes up on the back of the melt, pushes Desert Racer off the track, and now take a look at what we've got going on. Creature is pushed up on the back tail of Lamelt, kind of stuck there, and it's pushed the back of Creature into the track. So the industrial accidents are gonna try to send down the 91 gram anteater, try to dislodge this new jump. 
The anteater does nothing to that jump. It's just locked in there. Look, it hardly moves. The anteater goes flying off into the crates and almost goes sideways. That's a pretty precarious position to be in and not one that industrial accidents can be happy about. Man, judging by the stability of the evil weevil lamelt and creature combo, I don't know how anyone is gonna get that jump out of there. Roland's not even gonna try. They're just gonna send down the rev rod. And Revrod does what Revrod does best. Perfect action right there. Smacks the crates just lightly, goes over in the tires, and takes it easy. Little vacation for Revrod. Revrod, very good at that. Jet Threat 4 for the Jet Streak. Gonna try the same thing. And Jet Threat 4 succeeds. The jump so far not really affecting anyone. Jet Threat lands it after a little twist. And now the Anteater is just about upright too. So not a whole lot of damage right now despite what we've got going on. Monta Racer now. Monta Racer takes a nice leap off the back of this new jump and hits the crate square. Lands it perfectly on top of Jet Threat. Another good jump. You gotta love that these two veterans, Lamel and Creature, are kind of teaming up right now to cause a lot of problems for the other teams. GRX is gonna take a stab at it next. The GRX using those claws to his advantage flips around. What an acrobat and actually hooks onto Anteater on the way down and lands it perfectly. And that's a great example of why the Speed Reapers haven't lost a single car yet. Silver Dragon now for the posse. Silver Dragon goes aloft and I can't tell if he made it back upright. Oh man, that's close. I don't think that's quite upright. It's still possible he could get pushed up. But as it stands right now, that's not a good position for Silver Dragon. Tomb up for the slivers. He's up, he's into the crates, and oh no, Tomb up is upside down. He's tombed down. Trying to figure out what happened there. He, he clipped off of Anteater and then kind of slid all the way down. Never quite had a chance to hit the ground with enough force to flip back over again. And if he stays like that, it's a tough loss for the Silver Slivers. Undercurrent's gonna send down the Zerk. But Zerk does the same thing almost as Tomb up. Another devastating hit against the crates, and he does that slow slide off GRX into nothingness. Upside down again. Man, the bodies are starting to pile up. Here comes the mummy. Mummy takes a leap off his own teammate and does a great job of recovering. A little bouncing and bouncing and perfect recovery. Doesn't slide, just stops right there and he's good. Recycler's gotta take a crack at it now for the accidents. The Recycler smacks into the crates, doesn't bounce back too far. His front scoop goes flying up and he hits the crates nice and even. Oh man, the back of his truck almost comes off again but he manages to keep it on this time and his landing spot is a pretty safe place to be now papa wheelie's got to try to pop his way out of this one for they see me rolling papa wheelie what an amazing recovery on that one he goes up he slams into the crates and he lands it and just kind of drives right out of there like it wasn't a problem i think this is what they see me rolling thought papa wheelie was going to do for their team but this is the first time he's done it but it's the final so it was a great time to start bringing it jet threat three for jet streak Jet Threat hits it at full velocity and makes an incredible recovery. A lot of spinning, but somehow that thing always lands upright. Just the sheer force of will, he manages to not go over, and he doesn't even upright the Mustang. It's a delicate maneuver. Flash drive. Ooh, flash drive with the big hit on the crates. Just flaps backwards and has no problem recovering from that. A great jump and a solid recovery. No sliding upside down for him. Musha Motors now for the Reapers. Musha takes the jump and does the same thing as flash drive. A great recovery there. Flips upright at the last second. And the creature lamelt jump combo shows no signs of weakness here. A lot of the other teams have got ramped cars. Got to be sweating right now. Wondering if they're going to be able to get those ramped cars down there. Blue Knight Dragon takes a nice leap. Hits the crates and just sticks to GRX. No sliding for him. And now Silhouette, the solar-powered car, is going to take a crack. Silhouette gets a nice jump off the back of Creature. Kind of hovers there above the NASA Anteater. It looks a little precarious, like he might get dislodged. Let's see if Eye Candy's the one to do it. Eye Candy takes the leap and does indeed dislodge Silhouette. And in the process, goes upside down himself. 
Silhouette, though, is unharmed and lands perfectly on the ground. Rough fall there for eye candy, Dracula. Dracula floats nicely up on top of the stack, and that was a good jump. This vehicle's proving itself an asset for Graveyard Smash when it's going off the back of these jumps. Pretty good at recovering. And now it's time for helicopter transport. Let's see if he can take the jump. Helicopter transport! He's upside down! He hit the jump and he went straight upside down! We've never seen this vehicle in this position before! It didn't even seem possible! But that is helicopter transport upside down! Oh, how the mighty have fallen! A vehicle that's never been eliminated before! Oh, and he righted the Mustang right there! And now industrial accidents gotta be wondering, should they have sent him down earlier? Did that giant hill of cars cause him to flip over? Meanwhile, Rising Heat takes a weird jump and lands on the top of helicopter transport and he's kind of stuck there like pointing up in the air. I don't imagine he'll stay like that for long but it's not a great position to be in. FL Racer now. FL Racer, oof, a uh, tough bounce off the crates and he's straight upside down. And now Rising Heat's basically upside down as well. We're losing car after car off the back of this jump. It looked like helicopter transport could not be eliminated and yet there he is upside down on his back. And now the Ozenberg hits the jump. Another car with the ramp, this time has pretty good luck. Kind of backs down on top of helicopter and he's looking pretty decent right there. Creature just doing his best to eliminate anyone else with the ramp. He is the alpha ramp. Snake Oiler makes a nice jump off of the back of the ramp and lands it perfectly. Good job there. Speed Reapers again doing well for themselves in this match. Purple Knight Dragon's got to take a shot now. PKD hits the crates and sticks to his fellow Blue Knight Dragon. They are now locked on top of each other, and that's a little precarious, but he's in good shape right there, as long as he stays there. Stinger leaps and spins, and spins into the ground. I can't tell if he was right side up. He spun like several times, sort of arrowed himself into the ground, and he's not looking good. That's sideways, and if there's not some action around there, I don't think he's gonna be able to escape that. Right now, it's becoming a big death pit over by helicopter transport. Salt Shaker hits the crates and goes limp, lands upside down, and cannot move. Just stays right there. That's going to be a tough one to get out of. I think Salt Shaker might be out. A tough loss for the undercurrent. Gray Ghost. Gray Ghost goes into the crates just like everybody else, and... Mm, that's looking pretty sideways to me. I think that might be the first card that the Speed Reapers are gonna lose here. And the story of this round, the unassailable and unlikely Lamelt Creature Jump Combo. A grand total of nine cars eliminated. Let's take a look at the aftermath. And look at this, Emerald Undercurrent is just down to Lamelt. They've lost everyone. And yet somehow I don't think Lamelt is afraid. Speed Reapers lost one, Jet Streak lost one, Silver Slivers are down to two. Graveyard Smash in the sun Runners stayed steady in that round, and they're both still at three. Parthenax steady at four. They see me rolling down to two, and Industrial Accidents down to two. You may have noticed we're not keeping track of points in this particular match. It's the finals. We're going until there's one car left, so points do not matter. What matters is what car is left at the end. And as you know, in the first finals, that car was this one, Lamelt. Lamelt has not been eliminated, but Lamelt's entire team has. Will Lamelt lament the loss? those teammates in the upcoming rounds it remains to be seen right now the speed reapers showing strength with only one elimination in the first two rounds as well as parthenax's posse who also only have one elimination a big surprise there graveyard smash has lost two but they didn't lose any in the last round and Creature from the Black Lagoon has shown itself to be a true force of nature as usual. The Sunrunners are showing confidence in this match so far. They also have a ramped car, and their survival skills are second to none. They see me rolling, not doing too bad, all things considered. Papa Wheelie really showing his true colors. 
And Rev Rod showing no sign of ruining his perfect record. Can he even be eliminated? Last season, the Silver Slivers had four cars left at this point. In fact, most of the match they had four. Right now, they are just down to two. Will their experience be enough to keep them in the match? Jetstreak is down to two, but they are two really tough to eliminate vehicles. You don't want to underestimate them. Industrial Accident still got two left, but they are not the two they expected to have at this point. With no helicopter transport, our industrial accidents defanged. And after only one round, Junkyard Domestic Market gave up the ghost. Say goodbye to the shark and the secret weapons. They had a good run, but they're done. This final match, however, is not done. There's plenty more to come, and I've got some exciting news. I hired an editor, and I'm hoping to put these episodes out a little bit more frequently. And if you've been thinking about supporting the show, now is the time. Patreon.com slash Junkyard Joust. I'd love to have you along for the ride. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Two rounds down, and we've already lost over half the cars that started the finals. Hi, everybody. I'm Aaron Yonda. Welcome to the Junkyard Joust. Here are all the cars we started with, including, of course, last year's champions, the Emerald Undercurrent. And here's what we've got left. The Speed Reapers are doing pretty good for themselves right now. Emerald Undercurrent down to only Lamelt. JDM is out of this match. Silver Slivers, two left, as well as Jet Streak. And here's our other five teams. Graveyard doing pretty well for themselves. Parthenex is Posse, a wild card in this match, doing great right now. Industrial at two, they see me rolling at two, and Sunrunners at three. We're gonna jump right into this match, the running order has randomly been determined based on the number of cars each team has left. Evil Weevil's taking his place on the track. The buffer's in place, so let's start the match. Desert Racer starting out with the Speed Reapers. Desert Racer, a little bounce there and a little displacement off the side of the track. That's a, not a great position to be in. Mustang, ooh, can't quite take advantage of it. And the Desert Racer is forced up to the front. A little spinning action there with those implements. Desert Racer is still not out of danger right there. And here comes the creature from the Black Lagoon. The big ramp threat is about to take its place on the track. And this is going to change things up quite a bit. A big hit on the back of the Mustang and creature is in position. Desert Racer wobbles a little bit, but he's uh, looking pretty balanced. I think he's going to be fine. And now we're going to go to the Sun Runners. Monta Racer is going to take the first leap off the jump. Monta Racer, a solid jump right there. Hits the crates. And look at that flipping! What easily could have been just a permanent flip upside down, Monta Racer turns into a bounce and a recovery. That was a great job by Monta Racer. Jet Threat 4 hits the crate and bounces back and lands it, ooh, just a little bit off of uh, Desert Racer. And then he just skids to a halt. Great safe place off the side of the track. A good jump there for Jet Threat. And the Jet Streak have to be happy about that. And now the Rev Rod takes to the track. I suspect will be the same result as Monta Racer. And indeed it was. A great recovery there. A bounce and a flip. Just like Mono Racer, these two cars have a lot of agility and they know how to make a recovery, but only the Rev Rod has a perfect record, along with GRX and Snake Oiler. These are the last three cars that have never been eliminated in a match. And now it's Silhouette 2 for the Slivers. Ooh, Silhouette 2 does not do the same thing as the previous two cars. A bad result there, upside down, cannot make a recovery. Let's take a look at the difference between these two vehicles. There you've got Rev Rod up top and Silhouette and Rev Rod has the agility to make that recovery. Silhouette not so much and just flops upside down. A big loss there for the Slivers. They only had two left. Oh no! And now the Recycler has split apart and unfortunately the main body of the truck is upside down over on the side over there. That could be it for another of Industrial's cars and that would be a big loss for them. They'd be down to one. And with the loss of helicopter transport, they needed every vehicle they could get. And now here comes Lamelt. This will be his first jump off the back of Creature. And Lamelt takes it flawlessly, goes right up to the front in that little safety spot. And, ooh, man, it was close to being uh, sideways there, but managed to make a recovery. Good jump there by Lamelt. GRX now for the Reapers. 
The jump in the claws hit the crates, but a bad bounce, just like Silhouette. And if GRX stays upside down, that is the end of that car's perfect record. That would be devastating for the Speed Reaper, Silver Dragon. Silver Dragon takes a couple of bounces, flips over, can't quite right himself, and he's sideways, just kind of balanced on the side of the track. There's still a chance of recovery there, but mm, that's rough. Now it's the mummy for the smash. The mummy just kind of flops off of his own teammate, skids off the back, and just stops. Good play by the mummy, and she might have just finished off Silver Dragon. Flash Drive takes a big bounce off the crates, goes all the way back on the track in front of Creature. Just basically going to take a big hit now. Not a good move by Flash Drive. Jet Threat 3 is going to rocket into that car. And a big hit there, but it actually ends up working out for Flash Drive. Just a little push off the track. And then look at that Jet Threat now covering up Lamelt up towards the front. Well, you can't get much more protection than that. There is no way anyone is getting Lamelt out of that spot. And now Papa Wheelie for They See Me Rolling. Papa Wheelie takes a nice bounce off of Creature and lands it. Papa Wheelie has really stepped up their game in this match, doing a great job for that team, keeping them going, along with Rev Rod. Silver Bullet now. Silver Bullet, a big hit in the crates. Knocks Papa Wheelie backwards, but Wheelie recovers, and so does Silver Bullet, although barely. That was a real close call. And now the big boy NASA Anteater for the industrial accidents is going to take the jump. And it was a big hit into the crates. Now, uh, that, that truck is sideways, which you'd normally think, oh yeah, they're doomed. But we've seen this truck make some spectacular recoveries. Let's see if they do it again. Here comes Musha Motors. Musha smacks into the back of the semi, and look at that! There's no way the NASA Anteater should have been able to recover, and now it's right side up because of that push from Mush, who makes a great recovery, by the way. And now that, that truck is upright, probably gonna survive the round. Here comes Blue Knight Dragon. Blue Knight Dragon goes straight over the top of the NASA Anteater. Did he make a recovery? I can't tell. Oh, yep, there we go. Skycam is showing us that that vehicle is sideways, kind of stuck to the crates. Could be difficult for Blue Knight Dragon to get out of this one. That might be it for him. And now Dracula for the smash. Dracula jumps off of his own teammate and I think makes a recovery. It's a little bit sideways. I don't know. I think uh, it's to be determined at this point. Dracula could get pushed over if anybody hits him. Ozenberg now. Ozenberg takes a mighty leap and goes straight upside down over by the tires. That was an unfortunate series of bounces. Did not make a recovery and Ozenberg is probably out of this match. Snake Oiler now. Snake Oiler makes a great jump, a lot of flipping, and a great recovery. Rev Rod and Snake Oiler, the two remaining cars with a perfect record. Snake Oiler still intact. Purple Knight Dragon now. So he has better luck than Blue Knight Dragon, and he does! Hits and flips and lands it over on top of GRX in a pretty safe position. Uh, there's a massive pile over there, and that was the last car of the round. And it looks like we lost a total of six cars that round. Speed Reapers lost GRX and that perfect record, and the Silver Slivers lost Silhouette, and their hope for revenge against the undercurrent fading rapidly. Parthenax's posse hit hard that round. They are down to two, half of what they had previously. The Smash lost none, Sunrunners lost one, Industrial lost one, and They See Me Rolling, staying steady. The running order is up. The Smash are going to be starting us off, and I have a feeling I know who they're going to be starting with. Yep, looks like there's going to be some jumping this round. It's Creature from the Black Lagoon. Creature slams into place behind Evil Weevil, and now the jump is set. Musha Motor is going to do it first. Musha takes a great leap off the back, smacks the crates, and just drives away. No problem, great recovery. That is why the Speed Reapers are doing so well in this match right now, even though they're down to two. Jet Threat 3, let's see if he can do the same thing. Jet Threat flying all over the place. Look at the twirling and flipping. Amazing, and somehow just always recovers. Always stays totally upright. That car is impressive, and that's why it got this far. Purple Knight Dragon. 
Purple Knight Dragon clobbers himself up against the crates, drags his nose across the track, and uh, ends up with a nice result. Manages to make a recovery. Low center of gravity always helps. Let's see if the Monta Racer can do it again. Monta Racer, oh no! Monta Racer didn't do it! Hits the crates and then what happened? Bounces like usual and then I guess sort of gets hung up on Jet Threat 3 and that could potentially be it for the Monta Racer. A huge loss for the Sunrunners right there. That is probably their most athletic car. Oof, man, that could be rough. Rev Rod now. Revrod does exactly what Revrod always does, hits the crates, makes that recovery, does what Monteracer cannot, and is sitting pretty right now, as usual. Lamelt's gotta make that jump again. Lamelt does exactly the same thing that Lamelt did last round, just hops up to the front in that safety spot. That doesn't show much aggression, but it certainly is keeping Lamelt in this match, and they are the only car left for the undercurrent. Speaking of the only car left, Industrial Accidents only has this semi NASA Anteater. NASA Anteater's got to stay in this match, and that's a good way to do it right there. Got some leverage with the back of the truck. The Silver Sliver's last hope, it's Silver Bullet. Got to survive here. Silver Bullet slams into the crates and is upside down. Hits the back of that truck bed, then hits it again and has no luck recovering. The Silver Sliver's facing a really stiff level of competition here in this match and they could not handle it. There is no revenge for them this round. The Mummy takes a bad flip off of his own teammate and is now upside down on top of Silver Bullet. It looks like Creature might have just eliminated his own teammate. Bound to happen at some point. Here comes the Desert Racer. Desert Racer takes a great jump, keeps it stable, and is safe on the back of that truck. And I'm really just kind of feeling a lot of feelings right now. Feels like a punch in the gut with Silver Slivers eliminated. Again, in the finals of season one, four cars, they made it all the way to the end, and now the Sliver's out in round four. That just shows you the level of competition in this event right now. Great jump there by Jet Threat 4, by the way, and now the Mustang takes a nice leap into the crates and a quality recovery there. Gonna be right side up. No way he's getting eliminated this round. You know, when you think back to round two and the creature Lamelt combo, you gotta wonder if that wasn't single handedly responsible. Oh, oh no, flash drive. Flash drive takes a bad bounce upside down. Another Sunrunner's vehicle potentially eliminated here. Papa Wheelie gonna take the jump. Papa Wheelie does a nice pop and just drives over all the other cars, backs out into safety. Great job by Papa Wheelie there. Now there's a car that's so massively upped its game for the finals. It is truly astounding. Dracula now. Dracula, oh no! Another elimination for Graveyard Smash of their own teammate, Creature, taking its toll on his own team. And now they're gonna be down to just Creature. Snake Oiler, as usual, Snake Oiler makes a great recovery. Look at this jump. And his nose hits the crates. He goes spinning through the air like some sort of vehicular windmill. Snake Oiler has got this. And man, that is the final car of this round. We're looking at a total of five cars lost this round. And I got some bad news for a couple of the teams. Silver Slivers, the legendary team from last season, they are out of this match. Eliminated in round four. And it looks like we lost two Sunrunners that round, and they are also out of this match. We are down to seven teams. Graveyard Smash also lost two cars. Everybody else stayed the same. Our seven remaining teams are lined up and ready for action. The Speed Reapers, the only team with three cars left, will be starting us off, and they are going to go with the Desert Racer. Desert Racer takes the little jump and lands it this time and got those implements in position. That's why they like to send him down first. Jet Threat 4 is going to smash him up and smash him up indeed almost puts him sideways and upside down if he kept tipping but luckily for the desert racer he falls off to the right and now the rev rod's gonna take a shot a hefty slam into evil weevil pushes desert racer almost all the way off and now rev rod is slotted in nicely on the track and the rev rod's about to take a hit from the mustang 
Mustang sends the rev rod airborne all the way up to, oh boy, I'd say that looks like a pretty solid six right there. And now the Mustang is slotted into the track and the rev rod is nice and comfy over on the left there. A nice stable place to park on the track. That's what Creature from the Black Lagoon likes the most to set up that ramp and that's what he's gonna get. Creature just slams the Mustang. Wow, that was close. Mustang pops off the track. Otherwise, could have been upside down. I actually think the implements of Desert Racer helped get him off the track there and saved him a little bit. And now it's the industrial accident's last hope. Here comes the anteater. Gotta survive this jump. Anteater sort of survives the jump. It's pretty iffy right there, and I suspect another hit will tell us whether or not he's gonna make a miraculous recovery, or if that's it for industrial accidents. Lamelt. Lamelt does the job and goes off to the right of the track, but it looks like that semi is done for. Completely sideways. You'd have to have another miracle like last time from Snake Oiler. Snake Oiler punches the back of the Anteater, but it's not enough this time. The Anteater cannot recover and is now completely sideways, and there's no chance of recovery from that. And now Jet Threat 3 is going to take a shot into the crates. Jet Threat 3. Wow, look at the height on that thing. He bounces off the crates and gets, I'd say, an 8. That is the highest we've seen any car go today. Any car we've seen go in a long time, actually. And then check this out. He lands it. Perfect landing, slides very slowly. Folks, right now we are down to some of the best competitors in Junkyard Joust history. This is the cream of the crop. You are not gonna see any better vehicles. Pop a wheelie now. Pop a wheelie, oh no! Pop a wheelie finally has a little bit of bad luck there, gets hung up down at the end and just slips over sideways. But what a showing that car had overall in this competition. Purple Knight Dragon takes a little tumble and lands it and wait a minute, look at this! Snake Oiler pushed sideways by Purple Knight Dragon. Snake Oiler, a car that's never been eliminated and right now the last car of this round, Musha, has to save him or he's out. Musha can't save him and in fact, Musha takes a bad hit off the crates and look at that. Speed Reaper's devastated in this round. That is gonna be the second car eliminated. They only have one left. They started out this round with three. That is absolutely crushing. This is an entirely new feeling for the Speed Reapers. They've never been in this position before. To have one car left is unheard of in the history of the Speed Reapers team. They're down there with Emerald Undercurrent now. One car left. Jet Streak has two. And we lost one for They See Me Rolling. And Industrial Accidents are out. That is gonna leave us with six teams left in this match. Posse still has two cars, and only the Rev Rod remains with a perfect record. Rev Rod, the only car to never have been eliminated. Our final eight cars are lined up and ready to take to the track. Parthenax's Posse is gonna start us off with the Mustang. Mustang slots in very quickly, takes his spot up at the front of the track, and now Jet Threat 3 is gonna try to do something. Jet Threat pushes the Mustang partially off the track, makes him curbside, balanced precariously, not a good position to be in, but we've seen that car recover from this before. Let's see what happens when Lamelt takes to the track. Lamelt preceding Creature down the track, so that could change things up this round. Lamelt sneaks under Jet Threat, trying to use Jet Threat as a shield again, a car shield. And now Rev Rod, a perfect record of Rev Rod on the line right here. Rev Rod smacks the back of Lamelt, and now Lamelt does indeed have that shield, just as Lamelt wanted. And the Mustang still perched on the side. Desert Racer is going to give it a shot. Desert Racer pushes Jet Threat off the track and is partially off the track himself. Creature from the Black Lagoon is going to come down now. It's a little unstable down there right now. It should be interesting to see what happens. Creature hurls himself into just about all the cars down there and is now behind Lamelt. They don't have that handy combo going on yet, but this is still a tough situation for any car coming down. Purple Knight Dragon. Purple Knight Dragon. Oh no, look at this. Slams into the crates and for the first time in this match, 
cannot flip it over. That is a loss for Parthenax if they don't get turned over, and they don't. Jet Threat makes a nice bounce clear of the track, and now Jet Streak's the only team here that's gonna have two cars. We've lost one for Parthenax, and that is gonna be the only loss this round. That's gonna take us down to seven cars with the loss of one of Parthenax's posse, and the intensity level of this match is really ratcheting up quickly. Six teams left. Jet Streak's gonna go first, followed by Emerald Undercurrent. Graveyard Smash not going until last this round. Jet Threat 3 is gonna start off. Jet Streak still got two cars left. They are a surprising leader in this match right now. Evil Weevil getting tossed off the track. Jet Streak with two pretty solid vehicles, but will they have a chance against a car like Lamel or Creature from the Black Lagoon? I think there is a chance. They are doing really well for themselves right now as Lamel lines up behind Jet Streak. Rev Rod is going to hit the back of Lamel and go on top of Lamel. Lamel again trying to set up that Jet Threat shield to protect itself and it's actually got a little bit of a rev rod shield going on here too that car is just difficult to mess with desert racer desert racer pushes rev rod up to the front and wow i couldn't even tell that rev rod flipped over right there at normal speed but apparently he did and now he's up towards the front nice and fairly safe Mustang now for Parthenon. Mustang, the last car for that team, takes a hit on Desert Racer, the last car for the Speed Reapers team. And look at that recovery by the Desert Racer. A lot of flipping, a lot of twisting, and somehow, right at the end, manages to twist out of it and get away. Probably to safety over there. And now Creature is going to take to the track. Creature doesn't seem to have a problem with the bumper of Lamelt's vehicle. Can usually stop before he starts driving over Lamelt. And he does it again. And oh no, look at this. Oh, the Mustang has been tossed over by the Creature. Just knocked slightly and rolled off the track. I don't think they're coming back from that. Jet Threat 4 hits the crates, gets knocked, goes sideways. And I don't think he made a recovery. I think he is, you know, it's just really hard to tell. I can't tell. Let's let, let's take a look at the overhead cam and get a verification here. Yep, that's definitely sideways. What you've got right there is an elimination for the jet streak. And Parthenax's posse who came all this way as a wild card are out of this match. It's unbelievable. They had four at the beginning. So did the Speed Reapers. And now the Speed Reapers have one. Lamelt started with one and sticks with one. What you've got right now is five teams left. They each have one car. And in the next episode, they're going to start round eight and continue to fight to become the world champion of Junkyard Joust. One team that lost their bid for that championship, it's the Silver Slivers. They fought hard, but they couldn't do it. A big loss came when they lost Stinger early on, and I just don't think they ever recovered from that. Parthenax's posse, who started out with four vehicles, is gone. But wow, did they make a go of it, and they were really fun to watch. Congrats to Parthenax's posse for making it this far. The Sunrunners, a really well-balanced team. They showed true teamwork. Unfortunately, they just didn't really have a standout car that could lead them to victory. Industrial Accident had a standout car, but it got eliminated early on. But you gotta give the two remaining vehicles credit. They really put in a good show and survived a lot longer than anybody thought they were going to. They see me rolling and lost Papa Wheelie, but the Rev Rod has never been eliminated in a match. You've got to think they have a chance at going all the way in this match. Speed Reaper started with four. They are down to just the Desert Racer. It is up to him. The one and only Lamelt, the one who won last season. Will Lamelt go all the way yet again? Or will Lamelt's arch nemesis, Creature from the Black Lagoon? Creature has been devastating so far in this match, and there's no reason to think he won't continue. Jet Streak lost half of their jet threats, but the remaining threat is truly a great car and is going to be really hard 
to eliminate, Jet Street could go all the way. Well, there may only be five cars left, but there are still a bunch of rounds left. Next episode will be the final of the finals. Thanks for watching. I'm already preparing for season three of Junkyard Joust. I'm buying all kinds of really interesting cars, cars that I think are going to be amazing competitors. I hope you will consider becoming a patron now and help me get even more of these cars to make season three the best season of Junkyard Joust yet. Also coming soon, the Battle of the Losers. All the cars that didn't make it out of the qualifiers are going to compete in a special match. Thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time on Junkyard Joust. We started the finals with 50 cars, and one by one, even the mightiest of them all have fallen until there were five left. These five cars have fought their way through hundreds of other cars and through the finals to get to this point where they will face off until there's just one left. Hi everybody, welcome to the Junkyard Jest. I'm Aaron Yanda and tonight we are going to find out finally who is going to be the winner. Ten teams entered this event. There are five left now. Five cars and this is the running order. We're going to get right into the action with the Speed Reaper starting us off. Desert Racer, the final entry for the Speed Reapers, is going to take his place on the track. Oh, my little bounce right there. Almost went off the track. Not a great position to be in, but he's done it before and he's been fine. Here comes the Rev Rod because they see me rolling. At the end of the round, if a car is sideways or upside down, it is eliminated from the match. Desert Racer just barely avoids being upside down there. Manages to right himself right with that last bit of motion. And now Jet Threat 3 is going to go down for Jet Streak. Jet Threat takes it to the Rev Rod, flips him up in the air, and Rev Rod, just like some sort of gymnast, plants it perfectly. We've seen that many a time from that car. It has never been eliminated in any match. Creature from the Black Lagoon for the Graveyard Smash. This is a car that's feared for that ramp on the back of it, and that's definitely going to come into play throughout this final match. But Season 1's champion was Lamelt, and can Lamelt do it again? Lamelt takes flight, and did you see that? Lamelt going sideways, and that would have been upside down if not for the Rev Rod saving Lamelt from certain elimination right there. That was a really close call, and Emerald Undercurrent got to be a little bit freaked out by that. Lamelt has looked basically invincible this entire match. Nobody eliminated in that round. Round, so we are going to do it again. This time the run order is randomly determined to be starting with Lamelt. Lamelt slides underneath Evil Weevil, our track buffer, and actually starts to use Evil Weevil as a shield. That's like taking, you know, one of the pylons that sits on the edge of a racetrack and using it to protect yourself. Uh, as Evil Weevil gets tossed off by the Rev Rod. And now we got both those cars up at the front of the track. Desert Racer is going to get a shot at him. Desert Racer cannot get Rev Rod off the track, even with those big clamps on the front of his car. But Rev Rod's in a little bit of a perilous position right there. And now Creature is going to take a hit. Creature plows into the back of Desert Racer, pushes Rev Rod up to the front. Rev Rod making a nice recovery as usual. And of course, the last car of this round is going to be Jet Threat. Jet Threat pushes Desert Racer off the track, bounces back, and is safe. That's not quite sideways. That is close to sideways. Desert Racer having a couple of moments here so far in this match where it's been real close. And we are going to go another round. We're going into round 10 now. And Graveyard Smash got luck of the draw. We're going to see some jumping now with Creature taking its place at the front of the track. We've seen cars get under underneath Creature from the Black Lagoon. It's a difficult thing, but it is possible. And Jet Threat not able to do it. Jet Threat hits the crates and has a bad bounce backwards and now is lying on the track upside down. And actually, the track's a great place to be upside down because at least there's a chance you're going to get turned over. Oh, no! Look at this! Desert Racer is now upside down as well, off the track. Jet Threat almost completely off the track. Are we going to lose two cars in this round? And Rev Rod knocks Jet Threat back upright. It's like everything that Rev Rod touches turns to gold. He saved Lamelt last time, and now he saves Jet Threat. Lamelt takes a little hop. 
and a safe little bounce to the side. And that is going to end that round. What could have ended up with two eliminations is just going to be one. And now Speed Reapers are out of this final. That's going to give the Reapers a fifth place position overall in this season. Not too shabby for a brand new team, but unfortunately they didn't have what it takes to survive what these other teams bring to the table. This time, they see me rolling and start off with Rev Rock. Revrod has a, a weird bounce off the back of Evil Weevil and is now stuck curbside on the side of the track and takes a big hit from Jet Threat. And look at this. Spin, spin, spin. Land right side up. That is what Revrod does again and again and again. And every time, it's amazing. You're not going to see any car that's better at that than Rev Rod. They see me rolling, literally struck gold with this car. And now Lamelt takes it to the back of Jet Threat, pushes him up towards the front of the track, and Lamelt is lurking now at the midway point of the track. We're gonna see if that has any effect on Creature. Creature pretty good at handling Lamelt in general. Does it again, pushes Lamelt under Jet Threat. That could have actually been a dangerous spot to be in, but that's the end of the round. Speed Reapers are out. We just have these four left and nobody eliminated in this round. That means we're going to head on to round 12. And this time, Lamelt gets to go first with Graveyard going last. You may have noticed that I'm not showing the names of the cars anymore. Well, I figure you're probably familiar enough with them at this point to know who they are. And we don't really need that anymore. And you know what's going on. There's one car from all these teams left. And Revrod climbs over the back of Lamelt trying to get into that coveted front safety position position. Almost makes it. Here comes Jet Threat now. Jet Threat cannot do anything to Lamelt. Makes a great flip right there and lands it right side up. An amazing recovery. That car can really do amazing things when it hits those crates especially. And it's looking to me like this might be, yes it is, another round with no eliminations. This is going to happen. These cars are tough. They are not going anywhere. They do not want to lose and they are in it to win it. So here comes round 13, starting off with Graveyard Smash. You've got the random determination to go first. Here comes Creature. Creature setting up the ramp. We're going to see some more ramp action again. And Lamelt is going to be the first one to hit it. This time, nobody there to save Lamelt, but Lamelt actually does manage to plant his side pretty solidly on the ground. And that is going to be a survival if nobody messes with him. Jet Threat, a massive hit to the crates multiple flips and again lands it right side up just the seemingly impossible happening with that car and of course the same thing with rev rod look at all that twisting and twirling all over the place always ending up right side up another amazing round nobody eliminated we are going on to round 14 and again graveyard smash got lucky and gets to go first here comes the ramp Again, you have to wonder how is Creature going to get eliminated in this position? Another amazing jump from Jet Threat right there. Great survival. And that's going to keep him in this round. How long can all of these cars keep jumping off the ramp of Creature and survive? Look at that. I mean, that was a great survival right there. He's a little bit on the edge of the track, so Lamelt could potentially do something. Nope, it's fine. Lamelt jumps into the safety spot, and that is going to end that round. Now, nothing has happened for enough rounds that we are going to ask the competitors to increase their speed as they go down the hill. Faster speed should produce a little bit more action on the track, and Revrod's going to be the first one to try this out. Revrod slams into place down at the end of the track, and now Lamelt's going to put the pedal to the metal and go underneath. And look at that, Revrod, another great recovery, now in the safety spot, totally fine up there in front does a little twist before settling down it's like that car has complete control of everything it does so graceful basically and look at this jet threat going off the back of Lamelt, colliding with evil weevil flipping could have been bad could have been bad again but it wasn't it was close but jet threat pulls it out yet again an amazing competitor that car and now here comes creature let's see if this increased speed does anything oh no it doesn't evil weevil just pops up in the air a bunch but despite the increased speed creature still not going off the back of lamelt and again there's nobody eliminated in this round 
It is going to round 16 now, folks. Something's got to break eventually. Graveyard Smash going to start us off again. I mean, we'll go all night if we have to until something happens. Creature's up front now, so we're going to see some jumping. Lamelt is going to take that jump first. Lamelt, mm, man, that was close. Okay, look at when Lamelt hits the crates. Look at this. Upside down right there and brings it back sideways almost flips over and just barely settles back into place up front in his favorite spot. But a really close call for Lamelt. Lamelt's got to be sweating a little bit. Jet Threat. Jet Threat. It's a huge bounce off the crates. And Jet Threat is upside down. This is serious. All the way back. Hits the track and can't quite make it right side up again. We've seen Jet Threat do that a million times and always recover. This was the time that Jet Threat did not recover. And there goes a big jump from Rev Rod. Does a similar thing, hits the crate, comes back upside down, but then goes back up right again. Doesn't go anywhere near Jet Threat. The Midas Rev Rod touch was not there to resurrect Jet Threat this time, and Jet Threat is out of this match, and the Jet Streak are done. Another team falls, and we are down to three as we head into round 17. Rev Rod's gonna start out round 17. Takes his place on the track, and now is gonna be followed by Lamelt. Lamelt's gonna take a shot at Rev Rod here. Ooh, a big hit from Lamelt, and Rev Rod is tossed overboard. The usual flipping, and it looks like he's gonna make it, and then suddenly, he just flips over. Why? Why did it happen this time after all these times that Revrod has done this so perfectly? This one time, we've seen Lamelt pull this before. Lamelt did it to almost the entire Silver Slivers team, and Lamelt has done it again. Lamelt barely surviving a big hit there from Creature. They see me rolling her out of this match. We are down to the final two, and it's gonna be these two titans of Junkyard Joust. Lamelt versus Creature from the Black Lagoon. Lagoon. They're gonna go head to head over and over until somebody gets eliminated. This is round 18 as Lamelt takes his place on the track, pushes Evil Weevil off, and is hoping for something. Hoping that Creature hits the back and goes off. Creature does not. That never happens. How is Lamelt going to finish Creature off? How is Creature gonna finish Lamelt off? We've seen some possibilities. We know it's possible. One of these two has to finish the other one. They're gonna keep going down, and Lamelt takes a jump off the back of Creature, and it's fine. Recovers no problem. And now Lamelt's gonna go down first and set up again for Creature from the Black Lagoon. Lamelt sends Evil Weevil off the track, get out of the way, and what is this? Creature is lined up to go down the track backwards. This is is unheard of. This has never happened before. And it doesn't work. Creature from the Black Lagoon pulls a fast one and goes down backwards. He's turned his ramp into a weapon, an offensive weapon that can be used when he goes down second. Of course, he's going down forward now because he wants to set up that ramp, but now Lamelt's got to take the jump. So now Creature is a threat going down first or second. Lamelt is in big trouble right here, and what a recovery. Lamelt hits the crates, is upside down, but f manages to take it all the way down the track and recover. And now look at this. Lamelt decided to give it right back to Creature from the Black Lagoon. Goes all the way under Evil Weevil. Now has sort of a shield going on. I don't know if Lamelt being backwards is gonna help because Creature's backwards again. Creature goes backwards, cannot take Lamelt off. Evil Weevil buffering things there and actually preventing a solid hit. And so that's gonna take us to a brand new round, round 19. And this is gonna be no holds barred, everybody. We are taking Evil Weevil off the track there is no more buffer down there at the end. They're gonna slam into the front of that safety rail and bounce back and go all the way back down the track. 
That's what would happen if there was no buffer. Now you know, look at Lamelt take that jump from way back on the track and Lamelt smooth as butter all the way up to the front. Not a problem. That is a great jump for Lamelt. And now Lamelt's got to go down. No one's barred. Lamelt not bouncing back as far as Creature. And now Creature from the Black Lagoon's got to hit Lamelt around the middle of the track and of course hitting him backwards. And it doesn't work. Look at that. Love Melt landing and staring at Creature like, yeah, I know what you did. I know what you're doing, and it's not going to work, pal. Creature's got to go down now and take that big bounce off the safety rail. And now Creature is curbside. This might be it, folks. This might be what Lamelt has been waiting for right here. Creature goes off the track is upside down briefly but manages to flop it over and recover that is insane a huge missed opportunity there and now lamelt is going to go down backwards no holds barred backwards bad idea lamelt is now in the same position that creature was just in curbside up on the side you saw what happened to creature from the black lagoon Creature goes down backwards, and Lamelt is upside down, and it's over, folks. Creature slices underneath Lamelt, and Lamelt is flipped over upside down. And just like that, the champions have been dethroned. And your new world champions, the Graveyard Smash. And there's Creature perched atop the throne on top of all the other cars that he defeated in this match. Creature from the Black Lagoon is going to get the additional reward of this season's MVP previously owned, of course, by Lamelt, Which is why it is modeled after Lamelt, our very first MVP. And there are your Junkyard Joust World Champions. And what happens next season? Will it still be legal to go down the track backwards? Will that be banned? Will Creature from the Black Lagoon be banned? Will Lamelt be banned? There's only one way to find out. Stick around for season three of Junkyard Joust. Coming soon, the Battle of the Losers. All the teams that didn't make it out of the qualifiers are going to fight amongst each other for a title of some sort. I hope you had a lot of fun this season. I'm already putting together the teams for season three of Junkyard Joust, and oh boy, it's going to be really interesting. So become a patron if you can, and check out some of the new teams as I introduce them. And if you become a patron, I will also be asking for your feedback on what you'd like to see in season three and what you'd like to see come back, what you'd like to see go away. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time on Junkyard Joust.